Spirit fingers, everyone. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first Axie Fireside Chat. It's Zayori. It's Bryson here. We're getting things kicked off. We're going to have a great roundtable discussion today. We've got something like 10, 11, 12 different guests going to be coming on, different managers, talk about best practices, different things that they do in the Axie space to try to keep themselves safe. Uh, this whole thing was inspired by that last band wave and the dialogue that came uh, out of it. A lot of managers expressed interest in this kind of content and getting some tips pointers, best practices, just to feel a little more safe about what they're doing as an Axie manager. So we assembled some of the best voices, some of the biggest scholarships, a fairly diverse group as well to break it down. So Bryce and I are going to be hosting this thing. We're going to bring our first group uh, of folks on momentarily. But first and foremost, Bryce, how are you, buddy? So glad to be here with you. Oh my God, your intro was so incredibly amazing. I feel like I can't even live up to the hype that you just created, but <laughs> it's the Axie Fireside Chat, the inaugural episode. I'm here with Ziori in the round table. We have some excellent guests coming in. I'm super excited to be alongside some of these folks, learn a little bit about it because I know there were some people that were a bit unhappy with all of the band wave stuff that went down. So hopefully we can bring some clarity, get some community insight. And, and keep the fireside chat going, baby. I got my marshmallows. I'm ready to roast up, get the s'mores going, and have a great time. Thanks yeah, for having me, Z. That's what I'm talking about. No, it's going to be great. And we're going to try to keep this relatively short and digestible in these different segments. We are going to do firesides in a regular fashion in the sense that we want this to be an ongoing kind of content vertical and way to engage with the community. We aren't going to be doing them regularly in terms of once a month or every other week or some specific time cadence because we want each one to have like a specific topic that we dive into. We want them to be targeted. This isn't just another podcast where we're talking about news. We're talking about uh, a real specific topic here. And today that is best practices as a manager. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's bring on our first two guests here. Da, 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 da. We've got Tito Newfound and Dave versus Axie. And not that these two guys work together. They're just two community members that I've had the privilege of spending some time with, uh, talking to about different ideas and scholarships and Axie. And uh, I couldn't be more excited to have you two to kick off our show. Gentlemen, how are we? Let's go with Tito first. How, how we doing, newfound? I see that Axie Training Center flag in the background, and I'm loving it, buddy. Thanks. I'm doing great this morning. Thanks for having me on. Excited to chat with you and Bryson about Axie stuff that's happening. Yeah, man. I'm also digging on that hoodie you got there. Look, is that is that a Mystic Axie hoodie? Is that what we got? Yeah. It's a starry balloon. Mystic Axie. Bro. I'm from LA, so the balloon and star kind of makes sense. Bro. For me. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. And Dave, you're rocking the Axie merch as well. I think I recognize that shirt from New York. You snagged one. Look at you, buddy. I did. I had to put it on. I had another one queued up, but this one just looked too good this morning to not put on. I love it. How are you, Dave? How you feeling? What's uh, what's going on in the Dave versus Axie world? I'm glad that you're here because you're a guy that's not afraid to be honest. Uh, you're 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 totally worth the Twitter follow. You know, like I think you've got a great balanced take of like Dave tells it like it is. He calls him like he sees him, but you're you're still a positive guy. You're a builder at heart, right? You're a big part of the community, and I love that you're there to help keep us honest. You know. Yeah, I think that the, well, in Dave versus Axie world, everything's going well. I've uh, been super busy really ever since NFT NYC. Uh, but I would say is definitely on the Twitter follow. Uh, I do try to tell it like it is. I try not to sugarcoat too much, um, but tied to that same point, I want to have an honest conversation and honest perspectives um, within the community because as Jiho alluded to back in the old days, I guess there was a lot of, you know, fighting back and forth or disagreements happening. And I think it is a healthy conversation to have as long as you're respectful throughout it. So um, yeah. I've enjoyed a lot of the conversations. I, I will say, too, I never used Twitter before um, Axie and NFTs. And so it was obviously very positive when everything's great. As, as everyone says, you're a genius in a bull market. But um, <laughs> to have uh, to have the chance to actually have those debates on there, I think, is um, is a lot of fun. So I, I do enjoy them. Definitely. Uh, and, and Bryce, I, I, I want this to be a conversation. So obviously you're part of a, a huge scholarship as well at Loot Squad. So I'm very curious to, to just hear your general insight on this stuff. And maybe you can kind of kick us off. I, I think everyone's going to come on and, and share a slightly different angle on what they do as a manager, what their goal is uh, with their scholarship, and kind of where they're at, right? A, a different scope. You know, 50 scholars versus 400 scholars is kind of a different business model in a lot of ways. So um, maybe tell us just a little bit about where you guys are at on, on a scholarship side and like what your mission is uh, as as a manager and uh, loot squad leader. Oh, of course, of course. Um, it's, it's crazy. Me and Dave, actually, when we got an axe, he was like around the same time. So it's like 
we've seen both of our kind of trajectories in this space be very much aligned as stars in the sky. Uh, but, you know, so far, you know, my job at Loose Squad, as everyone knows, is I tweet way too much. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> to kind of go deeper in, in, into like the insights of what we're building at Loot Squad right now, we're at about 550 scholars. So we don't have an absurdly large program, but the idea behind it is you want to build with people that you can help mold into the next community leaders of Axie. I mean, three, four, five, six, seven months ago, it was a guy named Landfill who you know, found me, brought me into an organization called CTG that had a scholarship and esports team uh, and helped cultivate my career now to where I'm a creator, I'm building, I'm with the Loot Squad, and you know, we're looking to do the same thing. So kind of one of the focus points that I have at Loot Squad is allowing people to follow and extend their own passions. I think that uh, at the very root of Scholarship Z, everyone is focusing on how do you vet scholars in the correct way so you don't have to worry about these different bans from happening? And I want to get you guys' uh, opinions on this, but for me, the vetting process has always been if you you know provide value and just kind of show an interest in the lives of those who you are working with consistently, a lot of the times that implicit trust is built and they begin to you know operate and and and, and like connect with you as family. Whereas if you look at it like a business, you run into a situation where it's not it, you're managing people instead of growing and progressing with people. And I, and I think there's a big difference between the two. I love that. Uh, so much focus on the human side. So, yeah, Dave, maybe uh, you'd be a good one to go next. Where, where are you guys at on on that spectrum? Uh, what's scope and what's the goal? Yeah. So my goal has always been 100 scholars. Um, I will say candidly, when I first joined, uh, I didn't go in the scholar route. I went on the competitive side and then realized, unless you're going to finish in the top 10, 50, 100, uh, you're not going to earn back what you spent on those axes during that season. And so then once Ronan hit, I kind of saw the opportunity to go and create scholarships. And for me, it was also, I talked about this on the Twitter space, but um, I talked about how when I got into the game, I wanted a scholarship just to try the game before I spent $800 on a team. It wasn't a question of whether I could or could not spend $800. It was more, am I really going to spend $800 on a video game that I've never played? Right. <laughs> or it was like no one streaming on Twitch with it. So it was just kind of like, I didn't know. Like 800 and bucks so, is how much I've spent on Dota skins and cosmetics lifetime right. <laughs> on my whole Dota account. And I've played that game for almost 10 years. So if, like from a gamer's perspective, even though we're used to spending money on games, that is a that's a lot to spend for a game that you haven't been able to even play yet 100 percent, and especially with not knowing you know what axes were good or bad and it was all just kind of figuring out and doing your own research that at the time too there really wasn't that much research it was all stuff that was even posted a year before from um you know ba and some others and so what i would say is uh that was a tough jump in but for me i wanted to create scholarships for that reason i definitely took a different approach from how bryce and loot squad went um for me i i don't try to um I haven't had the same focus as far as community and growing in that way because I want my scholars to treat it however they want to, you know, come into the game. If you just want a little bit of extra income, if you want to um, learn the game and test it out, if you want to try to eventually buy your own Axie, if you want to be friends with your scholars, if you just want to be left alone, I don't, I don't necessarily force it one way or the other. I try to just let them be as they are. I've created now, um, after leaving CTG, I've created kind of my own uh, community for them to talk and discuss. But I just had a kind of a candid conversation with them the other day because I have I have about 25 of my scholars are the have the almost identical team, and five or six of them are now like at 500 MMR, <laughs> and I have you know private videos for them on YouTube. I've done training with them. We have obviously other scholars with the exact same team that are in the 14, 15, 1600 MMR range. And, you know, for me, it's like encouraging them. Like, I want you guys also to reach out and get coaching and guidance and partner together if you want that. But I've also provided tools for them, like that should allow them to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've had to have kind of that tough conversation. Like we may need to move into other directions because I also want to give the team to someone that wants to compete and wants to play. Um, and yeah. at the same time too, I've, I've lost, uh, three or four scholars because they wanted to go on esports side. And I said, Hey, like, I just don't have the funds. I'm not big enough team, whatever to have uh, competitive axes to kind of circle in and out with you. And right now I'm proud to say like two of the guys that I initially had, and I worked with them early on, but you know, one's in ready player Dow, he's top 100. The other guy, uh, I don't know what guild he's in, but he's top thousand. And so these wow. are, you know, That's I knew they were good huge. players, like they were good players for me and, and and they were awesome to have in my group, but I, I had to let them go. And so it's kind of had to work both ways. Like I'm trying to allow people to do what they want to do. I'm very candid about what I can and cannot offer them. And, you know, I can take them to a certain level. Um, 
and maybe that's something I look into the future is trying to make them more esports. But uh, it's it's yeah. been a really humbling experience in trying to you know kind of create it in the right way that, um, that allows sounds, them to grow the way they want. That sounds go. fair to me. Like I, I think there's it, it's unrealistic to expect you to be able to solve every you know scholar situation across that huge spectrum of scholars. But as long as you're upfront about what you're doing and you calibrate expectation expectations accordingly, um, I I think you're you're pretty good. You know when you have those moments and somebody says, "Hey, I want to do esports," and you go, "That that's not really what we're doing here." You know, no hard yeah. feelings, but maybe there's a better spot for you. That's like, that's just a, a good situation for both sides. Cause then you can give your axes to somebody who's a better fit for them and they can move on to another place that uh, is a better fit for them as well. I mean, that sounds, that sounds amazing yeah. to me. Yeah. That level of transparency is exceptional. I think, I think you put people in a position where like, dude, it's almost like you're like a, uh, you're, you're like a you're like a program that just spits out high quality uh, scholars, and then like you know when the opportunity comes, if they decide they want to go like next level, okay, like take it super competitively, you know, you're like okay, cool, go do your thing. I'm proud that I was able to help you build up into that point. But if not, they just stay in your program, and the ecosystem is is just as exceptional. That's awesome. So yeah, how about I you, you found? I'm curious. Oh, sorry, I mean to interrupt, Dave, but I'm curious uh, if if what Dave said kind of resonates with you, and if you have, if, what's the Venn diagram look like? I guess in your scholarship and what he's laid out, and what Dave's laid out. Yeah. <laughs> Chug, chugging the jug. I love it. I love it. It's like, uh oh, I got to collect my thoughts for this. Yeah. Um. Basically, we just I just started. Um, I didn't know. I, I mean, I didn't really know about the scholarships thing when I uh, started streaming on Twitch, and then <laughs> the viewers started asking me about like scholarships and how they can get one. So I actually watched Dave's video on YouTube on how to set them up, and then I just started. Wow. Um, I just started having people call in on Discord during Twitch streams, and then sing or tell a joke or take me on a pretend date, like a friendship date. And like tell me like where they would take me and stuff like that so i think um what i'm trying to say is we have a lot of eccentric special people in our group and we just try to encourage confidence and having fun and enjoying your life and then also just to like not just um get too overly excited about just like uh online life just to like try to you know because a lot of them are just going to school you know, they have other careers, lawyers, uh -huh. stuff like that. So just Can trying I, to focus, I guess, on life. I got to plug well, this Dave, real quick. Tito's, for so long. Look, give me a No, 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 no. Tito, because you're, you're too humble. You're way too <laughs> humble. Tito, Tito just threw an incredible party in the Philippines for all his scholars. He had like 200 people there. Wow. Um, gave it all back on his own money. Did, didn't, didn't do sponsors. Didn't do anything else. Did limited promotion on like Twitter about it too. But Tito has built a community that is uh, – one of the most underrated communities, I think, because he promotes a ton of just like pushing them into content, having fun with it. He's done really cool, uh, exciting and fun videos around it too. So I, I just, I wanted to say this real quick, you're, you're too humble on what you've accomplished and like your community is fantastic. And I see a ton of them in the chat too. Like they are loyal to Tito Newfound. I Shout mean, it was like watching game. your kids go to prom almost like, cause it's just like, <laughs> they see us, how we do the gatherings. They saw all the meetups happening. And then they made their own little version of it where they had like check in and games and it was just like they just did it all. I mean, they said they wanted to throw a Christmas party. I said, sure. And it, it's, it was really like watching. I mean, they're not my children, um, <laughs> but it was literally like watching people like they loved it. It was like they got to feel, you know, part of the community and meet others and just, I guess, if they wanted to talk smack about me, they finally can because then I can't <laughs> go to the, the Discord and read it or go to Tagalog Chag and Google Translate everything they're saying about me. I, mean, so. I love this idea, though, of customized engagement to join the scholarship where whether it's a video they send you or like, you know, t take me on a friend date or take me on a virtual date, like kind of as a thought experiment. It's funny and it's a meme and it is good stream content, but it also is pretty real because that's like a hard thing to spoof, you know, like is the abuser multi accounter like are they going to put their face and their voice or whatever else like attached to that and how many how many different dates could they like simulate to take you on? Like, I think that human element is it's manual in nature, but it sounds like you've actually found kind of a sweet spot of like 
Venn diagrams where it's content, it's vetting, it's human, it, it's fun, right? It's community building. Like you're checking all these boxes with this process. Thought of it as like some people had their say about it, but I thought of it like don't make them sing for their supper. I thought it was more like an audition for like, you know, to get into a production or a play. And, and the, the stories that they told at the meetup about how they got their scholarship um, all meant something. Like one guy was crying, telling the story about how he had to outlast me doing hand scissors to get a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually I just told him to quit and I'll give him one because I didn't want to lose. I, I got to ask you, Tito, I got to ask you, did you have anybody decide to come on and sing High School Musical? I'm a big musical guy. So if there was any scholar that came and was like, it's hard to believe that I couldn't see. <laughs> oh my goodness. I probably would have like given him 60 energy. <laughs> there was a classic, I, I think I've learned all the popular Filipino karaoke songs. Definitely uh, My Heart Will Go On is one of them. Okay. Uh, they yeah. love John Mayer. Good to know. And, and some Bruno Mars. Yes. Yeah. Now, I did not know that John Mayer was popular in the Philippines. That is uh, the first thing that I've learned today. Of, I'm sure more to come. Guys, the hardest part about this show is going to be me kicking people off to bring new people on. Because I feel like the four of us could do a 90-minute podcast very easily and just keep this thing going. So I do want to ask Dave about uh, vetting processes. Like, Do you have people send you a custom video? Do you do a call? Like, I know Bryce has in the past done some like, hey, if you're watching the stream for a certain amount of time and engaging, like, obviously you care about the community to some degree. What, what, what do you do to try to make sure you're finding the right people? Yeah, so I've, I had done a, a much more stringent, especially early on. I'd encourage if you're new, you do need to be very thorough in how you're vetting. Um, but it was a lot of just, you know, filling out forms, talk about your experience. Have you played Axie before? And for me, it was actually a negative before to have played Axie. Um, I have changed my scholarship to be a skill-based scholarship. So that means that I have a fixed amount of SLP I take, um, and then everything else is for the scholar. Um, to reward them, if you're a better player and getting the higher MMRs, you, you know, you're making a significant amount of SLP share. Mm -hmm. um, some are up over 80% now. Um, so the, it, I, I do a lot of vetting, just trying to look for the person. I, I make sure that, you know, is their Twitter a little, you know, older than a couple months? Do they have followers on Twitter? Are they engaging on Twitter? And, and I try to do it just on the back end. I don't have them send me that. I just try to go find them on Twitter after I meet them on Discord or in some other ways like that, too. I've started to open up more referrals, but I, I do always caution referrals can be concerning because they might just be multi-accounting themselves and say they mm -hmm. have a sister or they actually have a sister, but they're playing for their sister, which is a very dicey conversation we can have another day but or their I would sister say, isn't a gamer that's another one right where they want to bring their friends and family in and their friends and family are are not that great at the game and it's a real struggle and then it's even harder of like am i going to remove this person's auntie because she's not uh, above 800 mmr like <laughs> that seems like a demoralizer right <laughs> right and so yeah so i, I started to do that a little bit more cautiously optimistic on that going forward but um i have some opening up where i'm gonna pretty much only do referrals um but again try to lean on people with better mmr because again like in order to play a bunch of accounts you can't be 1800 mmr I see. you know playing all these different accounts with different teams it's just going to be too hard so um yeah trying to lean on my better scholars hey if you have friends and and i actually found what i thought was really encouraging and i found one of my scholars she had her own discord server where she was streaming every day she played to other axie infinity scholars or want to be scholars just to help them learn of her friends. So they'd be ready for when a scholarship was available. Wow. And so I thought that was incredible. So things like that, I mean, I've now leaned on her for a few other scholars too, and I might even make her, you know, kind of my first car manager down the road. So I see. Um, yeah. Very cool. That's insane for sure. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I love that. Uh, I love Dave's approach of like just being so open with, with the program in terms of like the transparency. I, I think that like, for like the betterment of all guilds, we'll see more guilds kind of collaborating and information sharing and knowledge sharing best practices. And, and, I, and I definitely think Dave is, is someone who's had a handle on it as well as Tito. I mean, dude, you just did a whole party as Dave was saying, and literally yeah. you were just chilling on it. You were like, you know, it was a cool party. I'm not going to say too much about it because I'm just Tito. I'm that chill guy that's looking real fly with the nice hair and the axie on the chest. You love to see it. Yeah. I, uh, you, you guys are slaying it. Um, I will definitely have to bring you back on. There's going to be a whole a whole series of content pieces I think we do in the Axie space uh, coming forward. Axie Tuesday was just the pilot. We're going to expand that whole thing. So, gentlemen, I'm looking forward to chatting with you more. Uh, make sure you give them both a follow. It's Dave versus Axie. It's at Tito Newfound. Um, they're around. They're making content. Gentlemen, any closing words for us before we move on and bring on our next guests? 
conditioner before shampoo, everyone. Boom. Boom. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Thank you guys for having us on. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck with the rest of the fireside chat. We'll All catch right. you guys yeah, later. Thanks for having us on. Thanks a lot, boys. Okay. Bye. Bryce, I think Bye. we're off to uh, a great start here. Up next, uh, we're going to bring in Ready Player Rich, I believe uh, is what the kids are calling him. And uh, who is he paired with, actually? I got to pull up my yeah. cheat sheet here. I heard, I heard he's pretty spicy. I heard that guy's been doing some some pretty cool things in the, the Axie and Dow space. So it'll be interesting. I, I just saw him last week in Miami. Pretty cool guy. Incredibly handsome. That's yeah, what the ladies have been telling me. So it's going to be interesting to see Ready Player Rich jump in. And who do we have alongside him, Z? So it's going to be Steve Woody, a gentleman from the UK running a scholarship as well. Uh, gentlemen, you're in the channel now. So if you have cameras, you're going to have to turn them back on. Discord's a little funky about that. And then we'll be able to show those uh, those pretty faces and bring you on. There right. they are. We've got Steve oh Woody up goodness. top. We've got Rich down below. Gents, you, you came out. Steve, I have to start with you. That sweater, that background, you've got the Axie printouts. I love the wall art, and I'm loving right. the sweater. What does it say? It's crypto time? It's cryptocurrency? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Okay, even better. <laughs> even better. I love it. The mic had it covered up. How are you, mate? How are we doing? I'm very, very good. How are you doing, gentlemen? Fantastic. Uh, we're off Swimmingly. to a, I love it. a great start. Now, I know you're a man with a lot of opinions. Uh, I love to hear them. So we're certainly going to let, let Steve get it all out. And Rich, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, another familiar face. Good to see you. Yeah, nice seeing you guys again, too. And uh, nice to hear Bryce butter me up before coming on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how are no, things? No, no, what do you mean? How are things uh, at Ready Player Dow? I mean, it seems like y'all are, are kind of exploding. So, I mean, I don't know if Bryce was even over speaking, to be honest. No, it's uh, it's it's been pretty good. You know, we're excited to to be in the space, and uh, you know, we we want to work on helping educate you know people coming into the space as well. So we're excited that you know Axie has provided these kind of opportunities, and we just want to make sure everybody that's coming here is going to be able to take advantage of it from an educational standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's one of the things that that we are trying to push for next is starting to educate, help educate the masses. And how many scholars are you guys up to now at Ready Player Dow? So uh, we're crossing 2K at the moment. So we have about 1950 in, in Axie and about 100 in Pegaxi. Okay. Wow. All right. Expanding outward. And uh, Steve, how about you, buddy? What, what's the scope of your scholarship right now? It's good. It's good. So we, like, we got in late. We got in like four months ago. And it was actually a conversation on Twitter with Dave versus Axie. Um, and I had this idea of how I was going to build things out. And he was like, you don't want to do it like that. And I was like, okay, well, I'm open to, to learn and, and to figure things out. And, you know, I was looking on YouTube and Twitter at everyone that was like giving advice and, and trying to figure things out as we went. But we've, we've gone for a very different model. We've got a different approach. We don't breed at all. Um, oh. And we've had conversations with people that say that we should, but we buy direct from the marketplace and we use other people's money. So the way that we've done it is um, going for VCs, uh, corporates, and we have a pitch deck where we'll go into, and I've been in back-to-back -back meetings about this. We have sponsors. The sponsor will come on board and they will sponsor a scholar. So we give 50% of the SLP goes to the scholar, 25% goes to the sponsor, and then we tw take 25% as a management fee. But we also do like an Axie buyback scheme. So after they graduate within like ideally 12 months, there's some criteria, but as long as they hit that criteria, then the sponsorship has made the ROI on their investment or on their, 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 their sponsorship. So that is then finished and the, uh, the scholar then owns their Axie. So wow. we, we're okay. kind of trying to empower people to not just like teach them to fish, give them a fish. We want to give them like the rod, the boat, the lake. We, like we want to help them to yeah, empower like the community. Full stack. So, okay, now yeah. that's, let me see if I can say that back in layman's terms. You have multiple layers to this where you have sponsors, like you don't breed axes, you just buy them. And then you have other people's money, like VCs, sponsors. They, they have a specific set of axes. They sponsor a player with these axes. The player grinds, and it's, there's like a term to it. There's like a contract there. And once it's all fulfilled and the ROI is met, it's not just like an in perpetuity thing. You're yeah. graduating to unlock the axes. Like when you graduate, you're walking away with that set of axes you've been grinding yeah. with for the last, whatever, 10, 12 months. Yeah. That is okay. That's wow. That's a lot to unpack. That's like yeah. that's proper business, mate. You're actually like this. This ain't no <laughs> well, hobby. Yeah, we've got uh, a limited company. We've we've done it all. Like there there was, look, when I got when I got into the space, there was a lot of, and we were just talking about this in a waiting room. Actually, there's a great conversations going on um, behind the scenes. Um, 
there's a lot of look, there's a lot of incredible things that Axie are doing, but we have to be realistic. There's a lot of bad things that are happening as a result of that, not from Axie, but just from bad actors, yeah. you know. And I feel like and, and Jiho said this before, and I really echo this statement. We have a duty of care to educate people coming into this space, mm -hmm. not just into Axie, into crypto. You know, there's a lot of yeah. people getting scammed, getting um, abused, getting um, exploited. And it's our, it's our responsibility. And, and it's our, our, well, it should be our mission. It should be definitely be baked into our mission statement. But we, we have that responsibility and that duty of care to look after people and to educate totally. them and protect them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, I was actually on uh, Dave's space the other day talking about this exactly. It's it's like, you know, all of the learning you know, that we went through to get into Axia, to get into crypto, we should be explaining all of that to our scholars, our community, um, other managers coming in, other players coming in so that they don't have to go through the hurdles that we did. And of course, like as time goes on, a lot of those hurdles are also removed. So I know like Axie Infinity is working on solving a lot of, you know, the onboarding and fixing a lot of that um, in the future. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's just everybody's responsibility as a community, um, everybody here to help onboard the next 3 million, to help onboard the next 30 million, totally. right? And make their onboarding experience easier and simpler than ours. I mean, I'll be completely honest, like me getting into Axie Infinity, my first sending over my first few hundred dollars to buy an Axie, I messed up, right? I sent, I tried to send it directly to like the Ronin instead oh of goodness. like to MetaMask, then Ronin from Coinbase. Ah, and classic. it was just like, all right, a learning experience. I probably should have read into it a little bit more, um, but I don't want anybody else to make that mistake, right? Mm. And like the other thing is like, where do you start? with your starter team in axes. And that's like something I've been talking about for a while. It's like, how do you determine with no knowledge in the game when you've done enough research? Like yeah. a lot of people can be dismissive and just be like, oh, they didn't, you didn't do enough research. But that's not really fair, right? Yeah. I think what I want to help people do coming into the space is like educate them on like how different axes go into each other, but include that somewhere on the front line so that, because like, for example, when I started, I looked up standard team. Let's just start there. Why it's a standard team. I understood that much, but I didn't understand how the cards came into play. Mm. Um, so there's like actually a lot of depth of knowledge required to play Axie. And I mm. just want to help people, uh, help my scholars when they're yeah. picking their teams as well. Um, and other people coming in the community, um, bridge that and, knowledge gap. And that's like part of why we're so excited about Origin on like a Sky Mavis side. It's not just about the updated graphics and like, hey, there's enhanced gameplay and it's like the evolution of Axie Arena battles. Free to play is bundled into Origin. They're non NFT Axies and you get to go through this tutorial like experience where you start yeah. with a, a pretty basic set and you go through and unlock more Axies and then you, you get this different experience of trying different teams and preset compositions that have some synergy so at the very least you can go i don't really like the way birds feel or "Ooh, those reptiles were really fun or man it was so great to be able to discard everything by playing that double bug lineup um that's really missing right now in axie so i'm i'm beyond excited excited doesn't even begin to describe yeah. how i feel about finally having that out there so that uh, and even just for scholar training, right? Imagine as a scholar being able to say, hey, look, I've been in the training ground for 50 hours or 100 hours or something. Um, prove that they know the cards, they know the mechanics, and be able to come in and say, hey, this would be my ideal team. And be able to yeah. say that with a degree of confidence. Like, that is such a big thing missing in our product offering right now. And coaches as well, you know, if they want to be testing out metas and, and, and getting to a deeper level of understanding of what's working and what's not, it's, it's going to be a more cost-effective way to do that. Yeah. And, and I, I think like for, for managers too, like Z was saying, the whole training ground for 50 hours, it'll allow you to get a deeper sense of like who you're dealing with in advance because you'll be able to ask them, hey, screenshot your progression. Let me see how many uh, of the free to play axes you've actually unlocked and, and get a good sense. I know, you know, for Loot Squad, we have an onboarding workshop. Dude. Yeah. Mean, <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, you're good. Yeah, totally. Well, it's like they think they've got they've got it in other games. Like I've seen, and I know Zyra, you come from this space, but like in Dota, you have that all hero quest where you have to go through and tick them off in order, mm -hmm. like alphabetically. Like little, yeah, 
yeah like little game modes like that that are going to give you more stickiness to people staying around outside of what we now was like people look at Axie right now and go oh it gets boring because it's just arena and it's like it's like 10 percent of the game yeah but like, you're so early yeah. there just, will be achievements wait. and different tracks yeah. and i mean yeah it's believe me our our game dev our game design team is expanding quickly and they've got wide eyes with all the different things uh that, that we can expand into one of the things i want to touch on before we move on to other folks um is like this idea of graduation because steve mentioned it like you guys have a very clear path i'm curious bryce and rich how do you guys approach approach graduation is it always just a congratulations well done it does that open up opportunities to try to get them to stick around either as a manager or a coach or i'm curious what that process looks like yeah, I, I think um, I think it varies, right? Because um, not every, some people are, are just there to graduate, right, and mm -hmm. and move on to their own team or create their own scholarship program, and some people want to stick around and like be a part of the community, continue to contribute. Um, so I've actually had a low rate of people actually leaving, and of course, when they do go to graduate, I ask them to stay. I say like, you know, we can help you like continue to educate, I can help you, you know, build your own program out. Um, but then there's also other people who just want to invest, right. And that's come that comes from like the educational sources, right. Um, graduating and creating your own team and creating your own program is awesome. But that's a lot of work, and a lot of effort to manage your scholars and do all that stuff. Um, so a lot of them also choose to buy and stake AXS, you know, farm Ron with SLP wheat or AXS wheat pools, mm -hmm. um, which I think is awesome because not everybody needs to be a manager, right? Um, I, w I love for them to get their own teams, um, but you can also just have one team, right? You don't have to be a manager and go down that route. And there's also risk associated with that, especially with balance patches, like, like um, the most recent one. Um, so I've, I've even had one scholar come back because he actually enjoyed being a part of the ready scholar community and his friends were here like we have meetups and all this stuff so it's like wow it becomes something more than just a scholarship program yeah it becomes like an 100%. educational um it's an actual format. community right it's, it's community, an actual yeah. community yeah. it's what a guild has always been like we like using the terms guild but this is truly like a guild is a community of people that work together, learn together, grow together, improve on their skills together. You know, there's always people streaming um, their play styles and coaching each other, whether they're on our coaching team or not. Um, so I think it's like so much more. There's a lot of stickiness. And yeah. really, we've with 2000 scholars, we've only had such a small amount leave, like less than 10 from graduating and then Man. just leaving. Right. Yeah, it's an, it's that's exceptional. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on and that. I, yeah. Dude. And I think that shows like a lot of what Axie is building here. It's a community more than just the game. It's a community. It's an experience. Um, and that people want that social aspect of it as well. And I think yeah. um, that, that adds a ton. That's exceptional. Um, and, and I got to kind of echo a similar sentiment. Uh, you know, for a long time, uh, I struggled with the whole scholar term because uh, you know, I really didn't care too much for calling people scholars. And I felt like uh, a lot of the scholars also didn't like being called scholars. So they did everything they could to like leave guilds as quickly as possible. So they could, you know, you know, venture off and like not have that term associated. Whereas like guilds, you know, whether someone's a scholar or on a scholarship or just a member of the guild, we wanted to come up with a term that encompassed the entire community. So like for us, like we call them all, you know, the loot squad adventurers now. So no one has to feel like, oh, this title is, is only reserved for this type of person or that type of person. But the next step for us was, I don't really see the need to graduate either. But, you know, for example, the, the ability of guilds to be able to swap out axes and give people different teams, like regardless of what the meta is, will allow a scholar to actually save money and instead of them having to buy a team and then the team end up not being meta next season and sure. then they lose a ton of money. But on top of that, what we've been telling them is, hey, you know, we're building internal tools right now. So right in our Discord, you know, as a scholar, it'll tell you, hey, when you can actually have enough SLP in your account to buy out another team. And then you can buy out that team and actually scholar wow. someone under the loot squad. And they don't, your scholars actually can play, be in the loot squad community and not even ever have to leave. And you can do this as many times as you want. 
So we're pretty much giving them or telling them to take the approach of, hey, earn pat like earn to earn passive income. So earn your SLP to create more scholarships under you. So not only are you making money off of your scholarship, but you're also scholaring other people, whether it's your family, your friends, and it, it creates the whole guild synergy. So very much echoing uh, Rich's approach. I think that's like a very good long-term model for su sustainability. Yeah. And it's like, it's more scalable for you guys on the, the loot squad, you know, like management group or owners or whatever, where, um, you know, you need more managers, right? As you scale this thing, you need more people to have that human element, yeah. element on board folks, answer their questions, engage with them. Like one person can't do it all. So man, that's, uh, that's amazing. I love that. This, I, it's like, I think at uh, some of the meetups, I've had conversations with people where I said like ethically incentivizing people to not graduate. And this conversation is exactly what I meant by that statement. Cause it turns heads when you say that, like, what do you mean? Why wouldn't you want people to graduate? It's like, well, I mean, oh, if, if you're really building your community the right way, I think a lot of people wouldn't want to graduate. Like maybe it unlocks another level for them or something, but yeah, it's kind of depends on the power of your community, right? Yeah, this they're also what, they're also our friends saying, now. Right? Yeah, right. This is the thing the whole the whole term of the word scholar. That the challenge with it is not so much what it is; it's what it represents. Like, yes, if you think about the word, what is the word scholar? It's about learning something and graduating, and and there's a process to it. But a lot of these, and I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of scholars that are involved in scholarship programs will never graduate. There is no end result, mm -hmm. and so I think like what. Bryce has done. I think it's incredible that he's managed to adapt a new terminology for that encompasses everyone. Mm -hmm. We've, we've like the whole reason we called our guild Axie Scholar UK is because we're not actually focused on like teaching the game as much. Like we, I, I have a coach. I, the first thing that I did when we set up scholars is I said, look, I do not know this game well enough. I'm not good enough. I need to bring someone in that's good enough. So my first thing to do before I even took a white, I, like, I, I've not taken a penny out of this myself. I don't take a profit out of it. Everything I've got, I reinvest in. And I don't just buy new Axie. We reinvest it in our areas. I'm paying over a million pesos a year for our head coach. Wow. We've got emotional um, uh, well-being therapists. We've got physical trainers, personal trainers. Like We have a whole a range of experts. We, we work with a charity on the ground. We work with mental health experts. Like We're looking to not just... like Yes, it's about Axie, and Axie is the core of what we're doing. But when you talk about a community, it, it takes more, like you look in any community, there's a fire station, there's a police station, there's a hospital, like you need Grocery those store, structures because yeah. that's what people, <laughs> people need. So we need to yeah. build it out in this world as well. We, yeah, we often like have internally, it started as a joke and then it got very real, like Axie Town's going to need healthcare. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's it, like, it oh, and that, when you like a simple statement like that, it kind of gets the wheels turning in your head of like, Oh wow, yeah, they're like we need a lot of stuff. Like the human out, the human side needs a lot of real world meat space things to enable us to enjoy the metaverse, right? So Look, something, something yeah. scares me. It really scares me, um, Zayori. And this is the I don't know how to word it, but it's the I look at the the way that and look at chat, and it's a perfect example. When moon, when SLP pump, when's like people are focusing on the wrong things and they don't get it. And they're so, they're either over leveraged and they're emotionally attached to something mm -hmm. that they, they, they jumped into without doing the research or without the understanding or the time frame. Yeah. And I think that there's not just Axie, in crypto, so many people are piling into crypto because they think it's a get rich quick mm -hmm. and they're not looking at the technology, they're not looking at the fundamentals, they're not looking at the underlying principles that we are changing the world mm -hmm. and we are building economies that governments have failed to do for so long. We've taken our onus on doing it ourselves. Like play to earn is incredible, but it's so new, it's a baby. Yeah. And Axie are like forefront leading this like this like trailblazing journey. I, I think people just need to be a little bit more respectful when they're they're on like when we take our scholars on board, we look at their social media, we look at how they conduct themselves. Because yeah. we have three core values. Yeah. You have to be respectful. You cannot be a scholar unless you're respectful to yourself and to others. You have to be positive, even when and especially when times are hard. Because when times are hard, that's when you need to be positive. And you need to have fun because otherwise, what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is a game mm -hmm. and we need to be able to treat it thusly, like before the profit side of things.
So I just, I just think people need a reality like check sometimes. Uh, that's a great set of tenants. Um, we're going to have to move on to the next set, but Rich, I, I'd love to give you uh, some, some space here to maybe follow up on that. Um, heavy stuff from Steve. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think I think he's spot on um, on most of everything that he said. Um, and, and I know I, I had this conversation the other day as well. But, you know, when we talk about people concerned about SLP, we do have to remember that there are a lot of people that are relying on it. So their fear and uncertainty about the price and what's going on, it's actually our job not to be dismissive and say, don't focus on that. It's our job mm -hmm. to educate them and help them through the tough times while we know that the, the roadmap and the timeline of Axie, it's going to be okay in the future. We just have to help them through the current trough, through the downtime that is occurring and not be as dismissive as please don't use this as a source of income. Yeah. While in a perfect world, that's something that we can say to them, we don't live in a perfect world, right? Mm -hmm. There are people that rely on this as a source of income and it's better to give a reaching and a helping hand than be dismissive and say, don't do that. Yeah, um, so That's just my thoughts on that one bit. Everything else, you're spot on, Steve. Oh, I agree. It's more the toxicity like side of it. I 100% I, I agree with you. Yeah. 100%. No, that's that's fantastic stuff, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. And folks, make sure you give them both a follow. It's at Steve Woody 82 on Twitter uh, and at Ready Player Rich here on Twitter as well. Uh, folks, if you're on the show, feel free. If you hop in chat, uh, plug yourself, drop your links. Uh, I, we'll see. The bot might be angry, but uh, <laughs> go for it. Have a go. Thanks for uh, inviting us, guys. I appreciate you for putting this together. Yeah, Both absolutely. of you are killing it for sure. Can't wait to hear awesome stuff. more of you guys. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on to our next group. Bryce, this is still uh, continuing very, very nicely. Uh, and up next, we're going to have uh, a totally different angle. We're going to have... Oh. Yeah. I, uh, I ditched Bryce. Hi, Bryce. Uh, welcome back. I ditched you there by accident trying to move people around. Uh, but man. I was feeling very lonely. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, you made that gone. face like, wait, where'd he go? This wasn't part of the script. Uh, so sorry about that, buddy. That's uh, That one's my bad. Uh, so we'll, we'll get everything <laughs> back up here momentarily. Uh, but we have best axes and Axie Trap Queen, Axie Queen, previously Trap Queen. Hey. She's got What's a couple up, of names. Hey. Um, give me just a second. We'll get these pretty faces back hey. on here. Hey. I'm so ec ecstatic for these one, this one because these are my folks. So me, me and Best had a conversation for like an hour last night. And uh, actually, TQ was one of the first people um, that I really like went deep in terms of becoming really good friends with in Axie. And um, yeah, me, we're really close. So it, it's a pleasure to have both of you on. You guys are doing so many amazing things. And I'm, I'm so thankful to be able to chat with you. May it's an absolute pleasure. Um, like, like you said, we go back to kind of the beginnings of our journeys. We met each other really early on um which i feel very blessed about same with you uh tq um and to be on with you zayori is is such an absolute pleasure yeah um, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed that we haven't really connected yet i know it was sort of planned and then we both got busy you've been doing a lot of stuff over at axie tech so uh couldn't be more excited to pick your brain a little bit and uh yeah trap queen as well she's one that i met very <laughs> early on and i'm excited to talk to her because i think she is like the the epitome of of like empathy in the human element when it comes to this kind of stuff and she's so good at empathizing with our users and escalating stuff that sometimes flies under the radar of like hey this is something we need to to deal with um and it's really important to have community members like that so both of you welcome to the show uh best let, let's maybe start with you i've got your camera up you're looking great today um what's the scope of the scholarship these days how big are we talking and and what's the general angle that you're you're going for yeah okay um so uh so i started with a personal scholarship just like everybody else did um and I, so I run a, a personal scholarship of around 75 um, scholars at the moment, which is, um, it, it's, it's hard trying to find time to manage that with all the other stuff I'm trying to do within Axie Tech as well. Um, I do kind of miss the sentimental days of when I had my first kind of 15 to 20. And um, mm. it was, I had so much time to pour into it. I had a personal relationship with e each and every one of the people in there. Um, and it was it was a, it was an absolute blast, you know, watching watching people's lives transform in front of my own eyes and having a relationship with them. And it's it's very unlike any other charitable experience or kind of activity I've ever done before, because you never really get to know the people that you're helping very often. So um, that that really absolutely captured my heart. Um, now, you know, kind of six months on uh, or however long it's been, um, 
We are we run over a thousand scholarships now through Axie Tech. Um, most of those are managed on behalf of sort of other other investors and other clients. Um, but we, you know, our angle on it, and I think one of the reasons we we've been so successful in the short time we've been doing it is um, we try to bring that family vibe, that community vibe, into um, the kind of bigger pool of managed scholarships. So. Um, you know, when people like Bryce uh, and, and others are always talking about community, 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 I can only echo that 100%. Um, that, that's what this is all about. Um, it's not, you know, we've got them, we deliberately try to move things away from being transactional. So, you know, it, we always say, you know, this isn't a job. Um, this is more of a kind of a lifestyle and a family and a group that you're joining where we are here to improve your life on the longer term. Uh, and actually just happens to be one of the ways that we finance that. But um, I'm sure I'm sure TQ will talk more about some of the stuff that, that she does to kind of help um, to help create that community vibe and really give that sense of caring, which makes such a difference. And um, to be honest, I've learned a huge amount from from the things that TQ have been doing, from the things that Bryce has been doing with Loot Squad and kind of bringing that into Axie Tech. And um, it, it's it's going really, really well. Um, we're, we're looking to kind of really grow more through 2022, bring on more scholarships and help as many people as we can. Very nice. Well, that sounds like a great opportunity to kick it over to TQ. Tell us a little bit about your hey. current scholarship and yeah, like what, what have you been up to and how do you go oh about uh, yeah, building this giant empire we're working on? Hey guys, I feel like home. This is my fam right here. I got the Queen, Diori, <laughs> Bryce and us like... First, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me, Yori, Bryce, and Best. You know, making spaces like this with people like you guys to make it possible for new players and new investors to engage with the OGs of the community is very important. I'm a new artist in the NFT metaverse, and I'm from the Philippines. I've been doing art my whole life. So I, I was found by Dynamite when I applied in the Axie Infinity Discord. And... I met um, my partners now, which is Best and Bryce, Kentasi, to name a few. You know, Rare, Lev, and Amy. And I've, I have everything. I feel like I've been preparing for this my whole life. You know, everything about my identity revolves around, you know, helping people. And I've done that in in real life before I found Axie. And I've been a player ever since, like playing Wild Arms and Suikoden and PlayStation 1 days. And then, you know, I stopped for a long time to work on a 3D simulation we call Earth. And I got in a comfortable <laughs> position with the marketing as a marketing director. And I've had opportunities of handling brands. I just want to say that Axie changed my life, you know. This is, like, I'm so thankful for Geos and Psyched Out and Sky Mavis and, and Axie Infinity for being the foundation that set waves of change for different communities around the globe. I've always said it in other spaces, like, as human beings, we only need a little bit to survive and be contented, right? And Axie allows others to pursue dreams, having the opportunity to play to earn. I come from a country where basic necessities aren't even covered by the government. Hmm. So the Philippines have no food stamps, no financial aid. You know, all the help given to the marginalized are coveted in political BS, right? So it's like this allows us to break family generational cycle of poverty and give something priceless that will last for generations. You know, I call it hope. Hmm. And, and every single person in your segment represents a crucial archetype that's vital to the healthy economy of Axie Infinity. Technical insights given by Dave, you know, and and Indes and Putra and, and all the other content creators um, give new players from around the world a chance to see the beauty of the game and the different variety of cards. I feel like it's a good integration to the the simulation of reality we have now where we need to work together you know as as different like we're all different breeds kind of you know like we're all different axes of different <laughs> breeds and we need to work yeah. together in teams so that we can build a good yeah you know, flow on the community. And thank you. I don't want to hog the mic too much, guys. Damn. But thank you for no, that was me. That was amazing. That was incredible. I've been feeling so oh. emotional these days. Like Miami hit me hard. I, I said this on Twitter the other day, Bryce, but 
I, I didn't speak at that event because I was just going to grab the mic and start bawling because I talked to so many managers with these like amazing, emotional, heartfelt stories of how lives have been changed in Venezuela. And I think there's some some parallels to what TQ just explained there uh, in Venezuela right now as well and people struggling and just hearing that like I'm, I'm swelling up a little bit just hearing right. that. I mean, that's like really... I think that little speech uh, captures a, a lot of what this is about and why so many are motivated to become managers in the first place. Like this is a big responsibility. It's amazing and you have the power to change lives, but you're 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 playing with real people's means uh, and that's just a, a big responsibility that you have to take seriously yeah. and understand what you're committing to. You're committing to other humans. It's not just, you know, people playing a game at a certain point. That's uh and, yeah, and, and isn't that what you. life is all about, right? Yeah. Like, think about it. We we meet so many wealthy people that are still unhappy because they don't. They have mm. that lack of connection with humans. They have that lack of connection with 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 relationships and other human beings. They don't find purpose. And here we are, overflowing with a chance of giving blessings to others. I just want to take the opportunity to thank you guys. Appreciate you guys so much, Yuri Bryce best geos and all the creators because you're all empire builders and i can't say that enough that you guys are revolutionary you guys are visionaries of our time because yeah. you know we're standing in the front lines of an of, of, of revolutionary time wherein playing can can give us food on the table yeah, yeah. i completely you know? agree with that tq and i i'd echo the the thanks as well I, I just every single day i feel so thankful for this entire community and and especially for those that started it um and i i think um i think i really agree with what you were saying in terms of um the, the sort of grouping together people putting their minds together who have um you know shared values shared passion shared ambitions um, because we achieve so much more. And I think Axie Tech has been a good example of this, at least for my experience. We've been able to achieve so much more. We've been able to help so many more people and reach so many more people's lives when we've teamed up with other people in the community. Um, I'm so grateful for, for Amy, for Lev, for Ref, for my partners in Axie Tech um, and for everybody as well. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I think everything you guys have just said is really powerful and important. And it, it does harken back to this idea that a community is the driver behind a lot of that. And maybe to, to harken back even further to like, how do we insulate ourselves with these sort of anonymous uh, engagements that we're doing here with scholars to uh, the multi accounting and the, the abusive stuff? It sounds like what we're all getting at is when you give people a place that cares about them and give them a reason to care about the place that they're in. It's so much more than the, just a job or like, hey, I'm going to do anything I can to min max and multi account. But you actually take pride in what you're yeah. doing and you care about the other people that you're in in a community with. Mm -hmm. And that's 100%. that's the big insulator. Yeah. yeah and, you know, look, I spoke with so many other managers with, you know, when when the whole band wave came out, um, you know, we we obviously run a, a VIP program for managers. So we have kind of over 100 different guilds in our in our discord that were talking about this in a very heated way, just as, as was on Twitter. And um, I, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing we can do as managers to say, like, you know, we can completely cast iron guarantee we will never get a ban. Um, so I think people should try not to be binary about it. It's risk management, essentially. And I think to really get to the heart of kind of minimizing it, yeah, people talk about community and helping people out, but why? Like, why does that help? And I yeah. think maybe we should spell that out a bit better for people. So at least the way I see it, there are going to be some bad actors, right? There's always going to be some bad people that, you know, maybe they're just greedy and they don't, they're not actually hugely desperate, but they're just trying to, um, you know, exploit the situation. Mm -hmm. Put them to one side for a second. And I think everybody else who has been multi-accounting, I think it's probably fair to say the vast majority of those people are doing it out of desperation. They're doing it because for whatever reason, the money that they're making from their existing scholarship just isn't cutting it. There's some emergency that's come up. There's, you know, they have to pay medical bills, whatever it is. Yeah. And they're in a situation where they have no other choice but to kind of do that. Now, if you run a community where you are providing help to people, your scholars know that if they have an emergency like that, they can count on you. And Bryce, I've seen plenty of examples on Twitter, right, where your scholars have, have okay. come to you and said, I'm having this huge emergency. Can we help? And I and I see you help them, right? And and you're all of the other loot scholars scholars will see that that help as well and and that's why i think you know that community vibe 
will stop some of that multi-accounting happening. The, the desperation will be kind of channeled through other in other ways and and we can help people in other ways other than you know them through breaking the terms of service yeah that, that was an exceptional sentiment i i agree with that wholeheartedly i think and, and i take it back to my, my first ever scholar his name was arwin as when i first got into the axie community and um you know he just dm me asking for a scholarship at the time i didn't even really know what it was but i ended up like going through the hassle to like you know give it a try and um i think it was maybe like a week and a half later he told me he was like yo you know i really didn't have a plan for where I wanted to go or where I thought my life could be. And now I'm starting to find purpose in this game and in this ecosystem and, and in helping people. And like you said, a lot of the the, the negative energy that's channeled in Axie and, and channeled by people who have to do things out of desperation is just because they're trying to reach certain plateaus or live up to an expectation that they haven't been able to achieve. Just having someone reach out and give them that 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 love, that caring attention, that attentiveness is more than most of them even get. So it's like we are really at the foundation of, and, and, and I love what TQ does because a lot of what she does is showing people how caring goes so much further than just throwing money at a situation and thinking that's gonna solve it. The more you care, the more likely it is that other people in the same group, in the same, in the same uh, community, in the same collective will continue to care and pay it forward. And TQ has created, and, and best you too, I, I've seen you guys doing giveaways and, and, and doing charity outreach events and doing toy drives to TQ and Axie Spike. You guys have created such an amazing ecosystem of people who continue to pay giving forward. And it's a testament to what you guys are doing at Axie Tech and TQ, a testament to what you've done in the space of wellness and mental health and and empowering women in the space of NFTs, NFT gaming and art. It's its absolutely exceptional. Yeah, just like uh, misery loves company, I think love can be infectious. And when you it like can start this feedback loop of getting people to pass it forward and because you care, I care, and because they care, someone else cares, and this chain reaction can start. Um, TQ, yeah. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts a little bit. Um, about like this idea of escapism in a positive way from gaming. Because I think that's something else that is often overlooked if, if you're in a situation where you don't even yeah. have means for food, you probably don't have a lot of means for entertainment or various other luxuries like that either. So that's, that is, is that another aspect of, of kind of the power of you know, play to earn through gaming? It's, it's not just the earning element, but playing a strategic game and being part of that community, it, it does give you something else to focus on, something to strive for. You, may, you used the word hope earlier, and I have to imagine that yeah. that's part of it, right? Like seeing your rank on the leaderboard and all that, like it's something <laughs> to strive for every day. Oh, it's very important. You have, like, I always say this all the time in spaces as well, and I think I just said it a while ago, that the when I noticed with the metaverse and even in the Lunasian economy, everything is a reflection of what's within and everything is a reflection of society itself, right? So life is hard and every single scholar and every single player has to go through all the quotas, all the energy and and all all the the, the things to do that they have to do as a scholar and at the same time have to go through life Mm -hmm. which we all go through and we are all reflections of each other so we know the pain of each other right so in in the metaverse there's no more distance no more so there's no more excuse of separation mm -hmm. like there's no more excuse of being not not they not being able to feel that empathy if someone's sick or someone needs yeah you know some a little bit of help and for some of them they don't get that at home some of them are just, you know, like still trying to to be heard. And some of them are still trying to find their way through life as well. Mm -hmm. And this is such an important role for managers because you are not just someone that's going to pay their SOP cuts now. Now you're someone they're going to talk to if they feel like, you know, they, they're really down that day. That's why I know that there are things that I can't help them with, like, you know, mental health and, and making sure that they have, you know, professionals available for them. Because I know that grinding can take a lot from somebody, but escaping through gaming is very important because as human beings, it's our job to um manipulate the energy that we get right so when we're feeling angry or, or 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 sad or hatred and we need to to fix this flow 
we can use different tools and gaming for me you know help me calm down into into something that you know something that a tiki that's patient <laughs> a human that's patient and i feel like Axie taught that um, for us too and i could see even scholars learning to this day about patience mm -hmm. about knowing that it takes you know one win at a time and a lot of times it's a reflection of life itself like you get to different points in your life one step at a time and that's yeah. a cool thing about having an axi because you know that you have managers and guildmates to talk to when you do feel down and you know that you feel like you're alone Alone. shoot i grew up i grew up feeling alone because i was such a introvert gamer like i just had my head on my games and my my you know my my art and i always thought that i was alone until i found the nft space in this axi community wow. i felt you yeah. know now found my peeps <laughs> <laughs> find your tribe that's amazing um, wow. Yeah, this is amazingly powerful stuff. We, we need to make the switcheroo here and bring on our, our next group so we don't go too far over time. But uh, TQ, thank you so much for sharing all that. I mean, that's, that's really amazing energy and, and I think what this community is, is all about and striving towards. Uh, Best, I, I'd love to give you a moment for any, any closing thoughts or uh, additional yeah. uh, words there. Yeah, I, I could talk about this stuff for hours, um, but no, I, I just close out by um, thanking you very much for having me on. Um, I think if I can give sort of just uh, tips to, to, to managers in terms of kind Please. of creating that community vibe, just to kind of enrich some of the things we've already said. Um, I think look at who you are celebrating and who you are rewarding and promoting within your community, because that's going to set the tone for driving the behavior of everybody else in it. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, it, it might seem natural to kind of, you know, reward the people that are earning the most SLP, but actually that might be counter counterproductive. Um, a lot of kind of really effective managers that are creating good communities, uh, ATAXI scholars I was talking to about this recently, actually, um, you know, that one of the things they're doing is rewarding the people that are the most active and helpful in their community, regardless of what they're earning, regardless of their performance on their scholarship. They are they're promoting people that are being helpful and uh, and caring for others and trying to set that kind of tone in the community so that as they grow, people will come in, look to the role models and you kind of build that whole vibe from within. Um, so, yeah, I that's like that. that's what I would say. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sure you and I will connect again in the future. The first of many conversations, I'm sure. Uh, big shout out to both of you. And uh, of course, give them a follow. It's Axie underscore queen. We know her as TQ, but uh, she's the Axie hey underscore queen. And I think uh, our gentleman here, it's just best Axies, right? Best Axies <laughs> straight up. Yeah. Best Axies. There you go. Easy to find, yeah. easy to follow. Make sure you give them both a shout. Uh, we'll catch both of Amazing. you again later. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Uh, You're the best. Thanks too. for the invite. Bye. Take care. Take care. Um, wow. Amazing and again, that Bryce. That that exceeded cool. all expectations. Every time I talk to Dra Trap Queen, I, I see her in Twitter Spaces all the time. I chat with her on Discord regularly. She's so motivational. Like she's just yeah. so full of like real organic positivity that it she yeah. brings it out in other people. Like it's infectious. It really is. It's so vibrant. And man, I was I was over here, you know, tearing up a little bit. I was like, man, let me. I I need to, I need to catch myself. You know, she was going extremely deep and. And talking about how people in these developing nations are really using Axie and, and creating a new system of, of, of growth for their families. And it's just, it's exceptional. I know we have two more amazing people on right now. So I'll swing it back over to you, Z. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we got some some cams coming on here. Every time you switch Discord channels, you got to redo the cam. So we'll get some pretty faces up here. Uh, we've got Evan and we've got Rand Corp. Uh, they're both involved in uh, the Lucid Scholarship. I think Rand's camera is trying to figure out what it wants to do. Uh, but Evan, we got your beautiful face here live on the I stream. Um, hey, hey. And there he is. There's Mr. Rancorp. Fellas, thank you so much for being here. This is fantastic. Uh, we couldn't be more excited to have you on the show. First and foremost, how are you? How are we doing? Doing excellent this morning. It's great to be here. Thank you, Ziori and Bryce, for having us on. It's been great content listening so far. So good to be here. Good to have the conversation. Appreciate that. Yeah. And what's maybe unique about you two in the context of this show is y'all are your partners, right? Like uh, not romantically, but in business world, right? You guys are uh, running the show. So like we're going to get to pick your brains a little bit as like two guys that are on the same team. Um, give us the lowdown, man. What's the, sc the scope of the scholarship right now? What's your niche? Are you guys all about education? Are you guys all about MMR? Are you all about fun? Are you guys the party bros or like what do we got yeah. going on over there? <laughs> 
<laughs> Can we be a mix of all of that? We got a yeah. uh, sure. you 100... can be the jack of all trades, master of none. I love it. <laughs> we got about 150 scholars. We're doing a little bit of a breeding for for profit at the moment, and we're just trying to onboard and grow the community. Um, we haven't removed one cent from our scholarship program from the ecosystem of Axie, and we're just trying to grow as much as we possibly can and onboard as many people and and grow the community and entertainment wise. We're we're trying to figure out fun things like tournament wise we can do with other guilds and our scholars and how to make it more entertaining and fun and community as possible. And we are oh go ahead please. So we are a little unique in that we are a partnership and we do have a third partner who is an OG and that he kind of onboarded us into Axie and and gave us a little seed to to start the growth. I yeah. see. And is that that's the namesake of the scholarship, correct? Cor- this, uh, correct. Lucid. Lucid. Yeah. I remember Ooh. when I it was like talking to you guys for the first time and I kind of introduced you to Jiho and you're like, yeah, we're, we work with Lucid. He was like, Lucid? Oh, shit. Oh, and he immediately had that like, <laughs> oh, I know. Like his ears perked up. You know, he made that Jiho yeah. face. It was uh, it was pretty funny. He got I, Mystic 214 and this and that. And exactly. The whole, the whole <laughs> see, Mystic. I'm, I'm too new to appreciate some yeah. of the OGs like that. It was before my time. I'm curious uh, like about the roles. Do you guys, are you just like true partners? Do you guys wear different hats or like, do you have specialization or how, how does that, that workflow look like? We're, well, we pretty much do everything together, but I think we've specialized nice. in certain things. Like e- Evan kind of works more on the scholarship onboarding and management side. I'm doing a lot of the breeding, but we're in a discord channel together pretty much almost 24 seven. Yeah. Love to see it. <laughs> yeah. We're always hanging out, having fun, making decisions together. And, and Rand just- and I have been partners and other things you know we've been streaming and doing and content in traditional finance and the into DeFi and now into axie um and rand's always the one who speaks he's he's much better publicly than i am so i'm more of the behind the scenes guy i so we got a ceo and a coo perfect a, a match made in heaven uh but bryce i'm <laughs> sure you can attest to how important it is like on the highest level of a scholarship right you got to make sure everybody's aligned like all the business yeah. partners have to have shared goals shared values and like there have been other scholarships that have struggled with that where maybe they started early four people just jumped into it you get 200 scholars and then you realize a few months later like we don't really want the same things here. My goals don't really align with your goals. Now, what do we do? Exactly. And I think it's so important to have that stuff figured out like as early as possible. And it always warms my heart when I see partnerships like this, where it's like, oh no, we've had various other ventures. So we're, we're pretty comfortable with our ability to communicate and like share goals with one another. Yeah, yeah. we were pretty much aligned already, you know, business wise. So just like pivoting into Axie was really easy for us. Our communication fits really well. And like, I feel like we balance each other where Evan's really good at something I'm probably lacking um, and vice versa. So. And how long have you guys been building in, in, in the Axie ecosystem with, with your scholarship? Uh, July? Mid July of nice. this year. Yeah. Very nice. That's awesome. Uh, so, so, Oh, go ahead, please. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Z. I, w- I wanted to pick their brains because Please. Having that CEO, C- COO approach, uh, when you're doing the onboarding, like what, what are some things you guys have been seeing in terms of uh, some processes that maybe actually could assist in to make, uh, maybe, maybe not onboarding of individual scholars uh, a little bit easier, but kind of the overall flow of how people go about getting scholarships? Do, do you feel any like kind of depth there? And is there anything you'd like to see improved on? Well, huh, I think, I don't know if that is on the role of Axie Infinity, to be honest. Like for us personally as managers, we have improved. Yeah. Like, number one, I'm a big proponent of hire from within. Um, mm. Nothing I hated more as a kid growing up with a high school job was like training the supervisor, <laughs> uh, the new supervisor on the job. Yeah. And they could have just promoted <laughs> me in the first place. I love that. So, I love like, that. You know, so promoting our scholars to being community managers and like helping on board people and like being active in the role of like onboarding was huge for us. And also like helping just take some of that burden off of us as well a little bit. And we've done things like create a test to onboard new scholars. It's nothing crazy. Um, our actually our scholar who we hired as a community manager came up with the test. As soon as myself and Evan took it and we failed, we were like, this is great. This is gonna, <laughs> this, you did a good thing here. Like, this is going to find, I, I found, we found. Is this like multiple our, choice or is it like essays? Like what kind of a test are we yes. talking here? Okay. And we don't want people to fail. You can Google the answers and it's more of like an educational tool as well. Like as you're going through the test, it will educate you about the game of Axie Infinity a little bit. 
and get you prepared to onboard and like know about the different um you know classes of axie know that your yeah. bird is not mm -hmm. your front tank we had that problem in july when we first started hiring <laughs> on scholars it's yeah. like you know basic knowledge of the game and then i think it also like twitch and bright bryce probably knows this really well like twitch i think we found to be like one of the greatest places to onboard scholars the people we find from twitch and that are in twitch chat are knowledgeable about the game they're watching it they're already in the community in the chat community maybe they haven't just watched my channel but they've watched bryce or dave or Saxy and others out there and they're a little more a little bit more educated on how to play the game and it's a little bit easier yeah. to onboard them in the community and i also feel like you mm -hmm. get a little bit like it helps you weed out some of the toxicity that might be coming your way so we've shifted to an importance of onboarding from our twitch streams and stuff like that i think it's it's just we finding good community man managers and stewards of the community to come it, in it's almost like engagement is the hardest thing to fake you know when you think about like a multi account or people trying to pretend to be multiple people like yeah it, and even if it's not like video engagement just like being there every day and like it, it it's actually kind of hard to pretend to be like five different people that are there every day tuning in with like meaningful <laughs> feedback. You know, that's a that's a substantially hard thing to do. So you know, not that it's impossible, but you just want to add as many barriers as you can so that people that are like generally I think abusers are looking for the lowest hanging fruit, like the, the folks that don't do oh, yeah. any kind of vetting, that don't do any kind of community building. So if they get the sense like, shit, I got to pass a quiz. I got to like talk to them. Like, I got to like yeah. watch streams i gotta nope. like have a hundred messages in the discord like the a lot of the lowbrow scammers they're just not going to do that like that's already way too many too much effort for them to put in so it's, no, it's no, going to be yeah. tough it's going to be tough to multi-account with us when every new person we onboard right now is getting assigned a coach that they have to talk to right and, and you know you have to like we've had some people push back we had a guy at 800 mmr tell us he doesn't need coaching really and he wants and he wants to learn on his own and we were like well <laughs> I think you need to buy your own axes yeah, then. You're like going to your some... last leg. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we're trying to help. We're trying to help as much as we can. But yeah, you're right. That also helps stopping the multi encounters. And we do believe they go for the lowest hanging fruit during the ban wave. We didn't, you know, knock on some wood here at my desk. We didn't have any accounts banned. But I do believe that's part of the reason is, you know, we are in the, the, the um, what is it? AS, A, uh, ASPL. 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 Yeah. ASPL. Yeah. Yeah. He checks all of that, you know, we do our due diligence and like between the test and all of that, it's, it, it puts up a really good barrier. And I also feel like that's why we saw some people talk about, I got a large percentage band. Well, you, what happens, I think this is just my personal opinion is if you're a multi accounter and you get onboarded to one guild and you find an easy process, well, you're just going to sit there and onboard to that same guild over and over and over again. And the percentage right. of your player pool, <laughs> it's like a cancer that grows, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. So you have to you have to remove the cancer immediately I see what and you not mean. let it in. Like that oh just makes goodness. perfect psychological sense. Like if you're an abuser and you find somebody yeah. that does zero we, vetting, you're just like, I, I got one. And then you just got a sucker here. Yeah. You know, I didn't even think about it like that, but you're right. Like so there's like the multi counters conglomerate around the <laughs> around the, the, the programs where like, hey guys, it's an easy and all they do is fill out a Google doc sheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and then that manager who wasn't doing the due diligence, a band wave comes through, and they're like, "Whoa, oh, yeah. you know? what happened to me?" Yeah, yeah. That actually does make some sense, though. So it's like like everything else, right? It's this decentralized process where all of us, like all of us, every scholarship, big or small, has to put up some barriers. And if like there is no low hanging fruit, then maybe they'll just like move on to some other scam or something. You know, like yeah. let's not make it too easy for these bad actors. So I hear. A lot of people say like, well, they could always get around it this way or that's not foolproof. And I don't think any one solution is foolproof. And that's why we're talking about like multiple layers of barriers so that it's just like time is the ultimate resource. So the more time, like have you ever noticed on a treasure, if you type your password in wrong or your, your like pin code, it takes longer for it to load the next time. Have you ever like fat fingered it five times in a row and it takes like 30 seconds to load? That's a perfect example of this where it just, it adds more time, more barriers for somebody who's sitting there trying to crack it. They can't just do 15 attempts in 10 seconds. They have to actually sit there and watch that clock tick down. That makes it less efficient for somebody to try yeah. to like execute sure. any given scam. So and I, I think you brought up a really good point, Ziori, that I hadn't even really thought of is that the people that are watching on it is really hard to fake the engagement 
side we uh, we didn't intend on that we were looking for just quality community members from the twitch stream but i think that's also <laughs> a good point like it's really hard to be in our twitch chat with 10 different names every day and build enough of a engagement that we recognize you because we try to onboard people that we recognize in the community that have been around and yeah, have like right. made made an important statement have tried to make friends and communicate with people you know that's what we look for Definitely. Wow. That's awesome, man. The Axie quiz. I, I would love to see more people kind of implement that. I think that's a really, a really cool idea. And I've heard people sort of say that jokingly, you guys are the first ones that I'm you're probably not the first to do it, but the first that I've talked to have been like, Oh yeah, dude, you got it. You have passed the pop quiz. Professor Rand shows up and yeah. if you don't pass the <laughs> test then like you're not getting, you're not getting a report card. Mom's going to be happy with. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys, um, I'd love to take the quiz myself and like maybe do like a YouTube collab with you. I would see if I would even pass it. <laughs> have to it'd switch be, up the questions. Embarrassing. And then it's like, all right, guys, Bryce uh, post the cheat sheet to the Rand Corp scholarship. Sorry, Lucid. I got the answers right here. <laughs> I have a feeling Bryce would ace the test. <laughs> I think that yeah, would make cool. a great little YouTube video, actually, Bryce. Like, get a couple managers to take the test and, like, live see their face and reactions as they're answering it and kind of put it up there, see who pass fails and stuff like that. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to connect on this offline. I feel that's like it would awesome. be sick. No, yeah. I love it, dude. That's, uh, that's so cool. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, myself and Evan failed the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's something. It, it, you do want to make it hard, though, right? And uh, I guess stuff that's not just too easy to Google. That should, and I guess to some degree, if you're not even willing to put in the effort to Google the answers, that's like red flag number one. Like, all right, man, you didn't even cheat on this test. Like, <laughs> right. I don't totally. want you to cheat. Yeah, we want you. You learn, you know? Right. And it's so not that, the end all be all. Like, if some, like, somebody brought up um, a counter argument to it. Well, if they ace the test, like, how do you know they're just not a multi counter? Well, yeah. it, it's not foolproof, but it's something. It's, just, it's another step. Yeah. And at least it's a deterrent. Yeah. I, I, I like that framing, Rand, where even if you do just Google every answer, like, we know that you've sat there and Googled it. And like, that data might be a little sticky because you had to sit there and learn it and regurgitate it on a test. Mm -hmm. And that is actually part of the learning process. So, um, it's actually an educational tool as well. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's really great. Um, gentlemen, we're going to have to move on to the next group. But again, I feel like we could sit here and chat all day. Right. I appreciate your insights so much. Any Anything else you want to share with us or any other tips out there for you know newer managers or even aspiring managers that can't decide if they want to dive in? Have fun. Enjoy the community. Um, it's growing so fast and so quickly. There's always something for everybody to do um you know give back as much as you can to the community and really just have fun that's all i can say i love and that that's amazing all right gents yeah. well take care and uh, make sure you give them a follow as well i got to do the shills i believe it's at rancorp uh evan i don't know what yours is you're at it's efficient on my name yeah, spelled all efficient. sorts of weird uh, and, and what's the actual scholarship is it at lucid uh something it's something it's lucid at, at lucid underscore united at lucid nice. underscore united that's it there you go i couldn't remember what that second word was so uh, make sure you give him a follow gentlemen i appreciate it and uh, i'm sure we'll be in touch again um all right let's get our, our next group See in here uh we have two segments left bryce so we Ooh, are uh, getting closer to the end but man i love the variety of perspectives we're getting in here yeah. though there's so many innovative thinkers that are hopping into these into these fireside chats and you get so many different views and diverse points from different areas of the world z we've been killing it we got two more people that have been killing it very much so putra yes Harupiro, how are you guys doing hey boys. hello guys how are you guys doing we're great Looks like Discord's giving us a little bit of lag, as it always does, but I can hear you great, uh, and you guys look great as well. So glad to have you both on here. Um, and, and you two are actually uh, two that I know least about of our group. I, I think I've talked to Putra a little bit in DMs, and I actually haven't talked to Paru Piro uh, at all, I don't think. Highly recommended by Dave. I've seen you around some of the Twitter spaces, uh, and I've heard that you've been doing some really good work. So I'm excited to pick your brain a little bit. Uh, thank you both for being here. Uh, this is This is incredible. Uh, maybe Putra, let's start with you. What's going on in your world, man? Because I know that you've also been making some content as well. You've been a, a busy guy over there. What's happening with your scholarship? All right. I mean, uh, on, on my scholarship, so my scholarship is still uh, it's small. Uh, it, it's still below 20. And right now I'm working with uh, Huga Gini to expand nice. more. And uh, the focus is always has been, oh, I think the one thing that uh, I'm not sure if it's too different from others is that 
my scholarship, how I do it, it it's more about teaching people about uh, blockchain, NFTs, and, and everything that comes with it, right? And and I would get them to start playing, uh, and then get them to, to start building their own team and, and whatnot, and they will eventually graduate. So a lot of my uh, scholars have, have graduated and started their own stuff, and some even started their own uh, scholarship. So it probably is something that uh, some, some I think other majors don't really look into, uh, you know, releasing a lot of uh, scholars. But to me, it's more of a get them to learn and then get a new set of people to come in and learn further uh, within the game. And yeah, so true to the how I really want to, to grow uh, the people around me and the community around me is that I really want everyone to, to get into this whole uh, blockchain system uh, by playing a game. I, I really do believe that NFT is the easiest to understand for gamers. Uh, it is a bit, to be honest, if, even compared to like what other NFT is famous for, like art, right? It is a lot easier to explain to gamer the concept of NFT. I, I and, definitely think yeah, you're so right. Is, uh, about that it seems like gamers are already primed to understand this like idea of digital ownership like we've all bought skins or like characters and yeah. games or something like that before so it certainly does resonate but if i can summarize it kind of sounds like your strategy is like as we were talking earlier about hey how do we kind of prevent people from graduating in a good way so that they can stick around and keep helping us build this community you're a little more like no once you're good and you're ready to graduate like it, it almost does sound like almost like a university program like they are scholars yeah. they're in they're there to learn once they've learned and they're ready to graduate you're like fly little birdie fly get out there and make your <laughs> mark on the world i i gotta bring in some new people to educate like that's a, a totally different take on this process yeah yeah and 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 to me it's really interesting i really don't want to retain people but i very welcome everyone to stay within you know uh the, the little community if they want to help out like a lot of people still are around helping out new people because like you know how old, uh, newer scholars come in and ask about like, this and that some even ask about how to play like very simple stuff like how to uh like the, the very basic of game and everything and it, it's really heartwarming to see they would stay and, and help each other so i think it's like a uh, pay for it kind of thing where you teach like this set of people and then they will go on to graduate but they would you know start doing their own thing some some you know some had bought their own uh other nfts like project and and make you know double triples and then they will come back to me saying that oh i've just done this done that i'm like very happy for them and you know they they would then come back and you know keep on it's like this this whole interaction between myself the the graduates and the current scholars, like it, it just uh, mm -hmm. being looped around within the same community. I love that. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I want to hear from Paul Rapiro a little bit. Thank you so much for sharing all that, Putra. That's uh, exactly what this is about, like sharing these different perspectives of how to run a scholarship and even different goals, right? There isn't necessarily this one size fits all template. Uh, Paul Rapiro, how are you? Give us a little insight about like uh, what you're doing on the scholarship side, what kind of scope you're at and what your mission is. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. Uh, so I actually from a quite different perspective since I entered Axie primarily to try to be competitive. And then after that, I just, after that, uh, I started to do the scholarships when Ronin hit. So my take on my scholarships is I just technically try to breed the axes that I want to use. And then all the extra axes I give to my scholars. Ah. And then, yeah, mm. since I'm, I'm really competitive, model. I do train my scholars a lot. And I'm quite happy that some of them are good enough to reach the top thousand right now. Wow. And I've, That's awesome. they've also been having, like, I give them the same axes as I do since I said that I try to breed my own axes. So all the extras go to them. Sometimes they even have more energy than me because I don't have to play a lot. But uh, that's been my goal in the scholarships is to uh, just for my own breeding program and then to help also my scholars to 
become competitive. And I also do encourage them to always uh, compete in tournaments as well. Yeah, that's incredible. That, that's such a great approach to take too, because it's like, you're not just breeding. Oh, I'm not just going and grabbing whatever I can. Afford. It's like, you have a purpose behind your breeding. It's like, okay, this is the meta. So not only will I benefit from being able to use these, you know, in meta axes, but then it trickles down to all of my scholars. And it's like, you guys are building like this high level uh, guild of just high achieving high MMR players. That's so cool. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, unfortunately, Indez had something come up and he won't be able to join us today, but that was one of the angles. Like, I'm glad we've got Pa Rapiro here to to talk about some of this stuff because that is a totally different approach where you say, hey, I'm I'm focused on are arena, MMR, and PvP. And that means for my scholars, I'm looking for a very specific demographic of gamer that really does want to push it to the limit, wants to learn, wants to grind. But you have a unique value proposition where you can say, hey, you're, you're getting better than average axes because I'm breeding all of these to be competitive because I want to grind. And you're offering coaching and mentoring, which is really valuable because if those people graduate or leave your scholarship, they still keep that data, right? Like that's part yeah. of what's so valuable about coaching is you're just improving your own skills. So that's something that sticks with you forever. Like those are skills that could maybe even translate to other games at some point in the future, you know? Um, and top 1000 is like that's that's hard that's like actually really impressive that you've got multiple scholars there i mean that certainly speaks to like that ain't luck right you're clearly yeah. doing something right and there's something in your process that really is helping players like step up their game that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise yeah, yeah i'm thinking i might need to become a scholar of yours as well i'm <laughs> 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 no, sorry about that that's fine yeah i mean part of it is having good axes and yeah, just the coaching is really very important to scholars. I do try to train my scholars and I have also appointed my best scholar right now to train the newer ones so that we try to maintain a good MMR across all our scholars. I see. Uh, so Putra, I'm curious. I mean, th this is one of these where you guys have totally different angles and approaches to scholarships here. But how do you balance like the educational side that you talked about prioritizing? Uh, do you look at MMR at all? Like, do you have a minimum MMR threshold? Do you have a coach or are you a little more like, I don't really care what your MMR is if you're demonstrating that you're learning about the core concepts here? Yeah, so uh, previously before the, the halvening, I was doing this uh, minimum of 150 SLP and then the halvening happened, right? Uh, so right now, once once that happened, I've gone into more of a, it doesn't really matter how much you earn in a day, as long as you're improving and you're trying to learn. And and and, and I can see, if I can see the, the result that you're still doing something, I'm still okay as long as uh, you want to be here and, and keep improving. Because there are some people who had uh, told me that, you know, uh, it's getting harder and they decided to not continue. And, you know, that could coincide with a uh, person having a day job and it's just not worth it and they gave back the team. So I, I'm okay with that. I'm not super strict on like the exact MMR they have to earn. Uh, have to get as well as like how much SLP they have to earn in the day. Mm -hmm. And internally we okay, so on, on my end, I'm like the other side, uh, like like the other spectrum from uh Arpiro because I don't really go competitive. And uh the coach that I have right now, he, he is also a scholar that has uh been playing like been improving with the same thing, uh, same team that he has gotten. And yeah, so so I've been trying to get the community member and like scholars themselves to uh, step forth and, and start to teach others. Like like this this coach right is also better than me in, in the game. So it, it's only better for someone else who are good in the game to teach. So I wanna create a system where people within the community itself uh, start to uh, provide value that, that way. So it, it goes back to like my, uh, ethos earlier where I want uh, you know people to keep learning as well as keep providing value. Mm -hmm. So that is yeah. like the first stage of actually infinity itself. And then there's NFT and blockchain in general, right? Um, so you guys uh, you know might have known that I stream. So my stream we usually have this like different segment. So it's either two or three segments. 
during the start, I would usually share like NFT projects that I uh, find interesting. It doesn't have to be NFT. It yeah. will be like anything that I find interesting, and I'll just go through the whole thing either before or on stream, and then share my thoughts and share like why I think they're good, why they're not good, and everyone learns and they they would you know some some people come in start to ask like very simple stuff and I'll, I'll go through the whole thing on stream and then the mid section would be playing actually and the last section would either play you know, play play like other games that is not actually right so that is exactly how i go go through the whole process right and beyond that that's also like beyond the stream right so people who are uh dm me dming me or people ask question in the discord channel as well i would go through with them if they have like any sort of questions like mm -hmm. right be it XZ or non XZ. yeah wow so bryce it sounds like all this keeps coming back to engagement like that's the recurring yeah. theme we're hearing there's <laughs> there's different forms of it right there's different goals and there's different approaches to try to make it happen whether it's at the starting point or somewhere in the middle but like my big takeaway from what putra just said is like I, I talk to people. I talk to my yeah. scholars. I hear from them. And that's how I know that they're they're real people that are trying, trying to either learn or get better at the game or just trying to engage. That's, yeah, and, there you and, go. And I think there's a, um, there's a big disconnect between the scholarship programs that are doing it and are, uh, because engaging consistently, it isn't a scalable solution. You know, it, it isn't something that you can just write off or be like, okay, you know, I can throw money at it. You can't throw money at being a genuine person, no matter how much money you have. It, it's not going to make you any more or less genuine versus, you know, if it's something that you want to do out of the kindness of your heart, you're going to take a, a certain pride and a level uh, of, of kind of deep thinking involved with that. And, and both of you demonstrate that so eloquently. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we are getting tight on time and we've got one final segment we do have to jump to, but I would like to give each of you the opportunity, um, maybe just some quick words, any advice to other aspiring managers, aspiring managers out there, or just uh, any anything else you'd like to share with the community. Uh, Pyro Piro, you, you can go first if you like here. Uh, I think my advice for just for new managers is just don't try to rush it. Uh, treat your scholars as family and Try to take uh, take uh, care of their time because they are spending a lot of time to play for you and earn themselves some SLP and earn you some SLP as well, especially since there are a lot of Filipino scholars. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the SLP earned is very important uh, to Filipinos. So just don't try to rush ROI and value your scholars' time as well as your own. I love that. That's a great sentiment. Totally. Who Putra, what do you got for us? Matt, thank you for for you for new managers or like scholarship providers. Uh, I would really ask them to think about what is their their goal, right? Rather, they they really want to create scholarship because of to earn some revenue, or they want to create scholarship uh, because they want to to to, to expand uh, the reach of uh, knowledge for NFT and blockchain. So as long as they got like this answered, and then they'll be able to go through the next steps. And I would, I would always go through uh, the latter one because to me, I believe that we are like every single manager in in the whole Exe uh, community have this like responsibility to to teach and to spread the knowledge of uh, NFT, DeFi, and all things blockchain. Amazing. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Um, I got to cheat and look up your Twitters. I should have had my cheat sheet because I got to plug you guys. Uh, give Putra a follow. He's Putra Isirak, I-S-Y-R-A-Q. Um, that's a tough one. I'm going to have to link that one. We're going to have a tweet afterwards <laughs> getting yeah. everybody uh, yeah. tagged up so that you can easily follow. And Pa Rapiro, uh, make sure you give him a follow as well. He's all over the, the Twitter spaces. Uh, he's pretty easy to find these days. But thank you both so much for being here. Really appreciate your insight and hope to see you again on future Firesides. Well, thanks, thanks again, guys. guys. See you thank guys you for having us. All right. Bryce, we've oh. got one segment left. This really has exceeded Man. all expectations. This is uh, this is just the first one, Z. You've been dude, you've been crushing it. It's these segments and this like community based like open discourse has been amazing. 
yeah, we, we got to do more of this. Uh, just the beginning of the firesides. I think so far uh, an experiment certainly uh, gone well. But our closer is a big one. Uh, I always hesitate Huge. to say uh, we, we saved the best for last, but it wouldn't be a scholarship discussion if we weren't talking to the man that actually created the scholarships. The inception man. of scholarships came from the community, and we've got that community member here with us. It is AK. You'll probably recognize uh, that beautiful six-part Christmas axie right there. Not a Frosty. I made that mistake a couple of times. Uh, but AK, hopefully you can hear us. How are you, buddy? Thank you so much for being here. I can. I'm well. How are you guys? <laughs> well, we're doing great. I know it's an early morning for you, buddy. So I do really appreciate you getting up to join us. And we did have Indez here originally scheduled to be officially your little buddy on this segment because he was worried he wouldn't have enough to say. I assured him that you would have plenty to say. And then he ended up having something pop up at the last second. So I, I figured you'd be able to uh, to handle this on your own. Yes, I, 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 I think I can handle the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What could possibly go wrong. Yeah. So give us like the the kind of ground groundwork here. Um, where are we at in the size of your personal scholarship? Maybe even take us back to the beginning. Like, where did it all come from? Did you just wake up one day and have this aha moment? Was there like a significant source of inspiration to get us here? Like, how, how were scholarships actually born? Yeah. So uh, my own program, I have uh, eight hundred eight fifty these days. Um, and so, you know, that's sp spread between, you know, my own axes, my own accounts, as well as uh, I manage some accounts in YGG. Um, and, you know, the, I guess, the, you know, really, the, it started just because I had a bunch of axes sitting around, right? I, you know, I sort of locked down at, at home and, uh, you know, had all, of, had all of these axes sitting around. There were people who were looking to join and get involved with the game and, you know, maybe even just wanted to try it out a little bit. Um, and, you know, that wasn't something that, you know, they didn't necessarily want to, you know, put up, uh, you know, $150, $200 to buy a team. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, that is <laughs> pretty understandable. Pretty, and, you know, so as a sort of like free to play, just, you know, it lets onboard some new people thing. Uh, it, it, I, I, decided to give it a try. Um, and I <laughs> messaged Gio. I was like, am I crazy or does this actually, like, is this possible? Um, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I, <laughs> like, I don't know why you're asking me. Like, try it. Wow. Um, and so I, I posted in the main Discord, said like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And got a bunch of messages, posted an article uh, that, uh, or, uh, you know, Medium article of outlining how I was thinking about, you know, this rental program. Yeah. Um, and that apparently went viral in the Philippines. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Did you call sudden, it scholarships <laughs> at the beginning or was that a term that was like kind of added onto it after it went viral? Yes, I called I called it scholarships. Okay. That's uh, insane. Know, my, my thought behind the terminology was essentially that, you know, people would be able to try things out, explore, learn, and you know, eventually, uh, you know, graduate uh, to having their own team and, and potentially doing this, this in, you know, in their own way, right? That's, that's so exceptional. Um, like, like, you literally are the godfather of scholarships. You're the reason why <laughs> each and every one of us that does anything relating to scholarships can have a place in this Axie community because you decided to be so selfless as to give other people a chance to be onboarded to test the game out for the first time around and, and look what it's grown into, AK. Can you could you have even like imagined it would be this big when you first started? Honestly, no. Um, you know, I it it even caught me a bit off guard as things you know grew and as things you know you know as more and more people started offering scholarships and started thinking about this not just as like a fun little onboarding tool, but as a sort of business or as a guild, as an entity, right? Um, that, you know, this is something that we can, you know, scale and, and, you know, bring to mm -hmm. a much broader group of people and have, you know, tools around that, right? Um, you know, the, <laughs> certainly when I started, you know, everything was, you know, run out of my Google spreadsheet and Google spreadsheet was king and, uh, you know, there, what, you know, payouts were done manually. Um, you know, I had a cash out form. 
Yeah. A yeah. cash out for him. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, and, you know, I would essentially verify that people didn't, um, it didn't put in their, you know, their, let's say that it didn't leak the form and, you know, try to get a cash out of someone else's wallet, uh, because I would ask them for, for their account password in the cash out form. Right. Um, I am. One yeah, of the things yeah, I'm most uh, curious about is your onboarding experience, because like, how, how do you approach this like multi-counting risk or, or fear right now? Um, these are like you know, semi-trustless, uncollateralized loans with what, what essentially amount to like internet strangers. So how do you go about vetting these people to try to insulate yourself from uh, abusers or you know otherwise bad actors? Is it all about community for you as we've been getting back to through a lot of this uh, content piece or do you have something else? So for me, I, I think that there's sort of a spectrum of multi-accounters and, um, you know, essentially there's always going to be a group of people who are sufficiently determined to manipulate and abuse the system. And if they're smart about it, they're going to get away with it and nothing I can do is going to stop that. And that's sort of my baseline, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, on the negative side is that there will always be some people who will slip through the cracks just necessarily. Right. Okay. Um, and, you know, at the, on the sa same token, there's always going to be a lot of people who are honest and straightforward and, you know, who don't, you know, who are legitimately looking for a scholarship and any, uh, let's say, doubts or any question that I might have can be easily explained or thought of as, uh, you know, just an honest mistake or, or um, you know, maybe them copy pasting something or, you know, whatever it might be, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and... It's the middle ground there, the people who are, uh, let's say, looking to maybe be bad actors um, or maybe multi-account, um, who I focus on catching or, or weeding out. You mean the ones that haven't because... decided yet? Those neutral ones that are sort of like, <laughs> they're not sure if they can resist the temptation, but they haven't completely committed to it yet? Like you might be able to bring them back to the light side, uh, these kind of people? Uh, all the way from that side of the spectrum to the sloppy and lazy multi-account. Ah, oh my people. goodness! Yes, Who, we've all seen uh, those before. You know, the the single account, yeah. uh, the single Ronin multi-account is just like, dude, you're not even trying to hide it. I mean, come on! Yeah, like single Ronin, you caught single me. Yeah. Address, single everything. Who you know, or, or in some cases even outright say, you know, hey, uh, like my other my other team is uh, you know a little better, or my other. <laughs> you know, I, I really I like your team so much more than my other team. Like, why would you tell me this? Wait, Stop what? It. Like, go away. You know more account for you. I hope you like your other team because that's the only one you got now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, I guess, you know, for me, it's a, a few things. I, I've kind of changed my onboarding over the course of the last year and a half, a little bit. Uh, you know, when I started, it was very much just posting in the Discord, um, you know, hey, I have some accounts who wants them. Right. And I had a I had a little forum where, um, you know, people could it was it was sort of discord address, uh, you know, a, a couple lines of information about, you know, who they were, why they wanted a scholarship and, uh, you know, a rough acknowledgement that you know, they would follow the rules. Okay. But um, then I, I shifted to taking mostly by referrals. Um, and, you know, a lot of sort of the. You know, a lot of my scholarship is uh, referrals, uh, and the idea being that uh, you know if you refer somebody, you're sort of vouching for them, and yeah. that um, you know they, you essentially you know if if they are multi-accounting or they are abusing the system, then you know you as their as their referrer, that reflects on you as well. How about skill level with that? Uh, we mentioned it earlier, but have you struggled with the referral program where people just refer like their family members that even if it's legitimate in terms of multi-accounting, their family members might not really be gamers. You know, like the one, are you really going to remove auntie from your scholarship because she's 500 MMR? Have you struggled with that, <laughs> that aspect of it with the, yeah. the referral system? Uh, it's definitely a challenge. And, you know, as the game has evolved, um, you know, anti being at 500 MMR might have been okay at some point in the True. past, right? It, it wouldn't have been ideal, but, you know, if she was enjoying and getting some benefit from that, hey, who, you know, good for her, right? 
Um, at, at the same time, you know, these days, especially with things like the MMR restriction and you know the fact that the game, you know, the game is larger. There's more people than ever looking for scholarships, and and you know the sort of total, you know, the amount of people that are like available and and <laughs> you know willing to, to uh, you know try it out is you know many yeah, times right. higher than the amount of slots that are available. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I I focused a little bit more on the sort of PVP and. Uh, you know, competitive players. Um, and so, you know, to, some of that has been, let's say, referrals from existing scholars. Uh, but what I actually shifted to uh, a, a few months back was a more open application form again um, that was, that's, you know, even today, fully open to the public. And, uh, you know, anybody can basically go to my Twitter profile, click Brave. the form and fill it out, right? Um, and that form has uh, sort of, it has a PVP quiz in it, um, and so I can sort of get a sense of how people are thinking about playing the game a little bit. It's I think four questions, um, okay. and with you know sort of a free re you know a, a multiple choice component and then a free free response component, um, and it also asks questions about the axi terms and conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like a good one. you know it's how great. many accounts are you allowed to play in Axie Infinity? And I've seen some very interesting responses. <laughs> Everything from, I believe, I think it's one to plenty of people have outright said two. Lots of people have said one account per device. Lots of people have said, uh, you know, I, I, as many as the manager wants me to play. Some people have, some people have said four. Um, and so it's a very quick way for me to literally go through my spreadsheet and just filter through no. yeah and, you know right like you know every single one of the ones that does not have a valid response or does not have the correct response immediately gets thrown out right right like i don't even look at I anything mean, else. ak that um, touches so close to my heart though because one of the things you know a twitter is so useful just to like read the room yeah. a little bit sometimes like get the temperature and it's not about like the individual comments as much as the like wow 60 percent of people are responding like about x um, and one thing that I noticed in the last bandwave conversation, a lot of good actor managers speaking to me as if there are no bad actor managers in the system. And unfortunately, there are bad actor managers out there who do onboard scholars and just teach them to multi-account. Like that is an experience that some scholars have absolutely gone through. And the manager is either just they don't care about risk or their whole goal is to just make as much as they can in the short term because they know they're going to get banned eventually. Uh, and th oftentimes they just don't care or, or they think that they're clever and they're going to get away with it. And they just pass that on to the scholars. And then those scholars can become a source of like, well, I've been multi-accounting for X amount of time and I haven't gotten caught yet. And then that starts to spread like a virus. So like, the point is that not all managers are created equal. And everyone we've spoken to today is obviously a good actor manager that's trying really hard to make the best possible community they can. Unfortunately, that's not everyone. And it's not just scholars that are multi-accounting. There are absolutely managers endorsing this stuff. And those are the kind of people that like, they're not on Twitter, they're hiding in the shadows, and we yeah. need to get them the hell out of here. Well, it, it's, it's an ongoing problem. And I, and I don't think that there's a great solution to that, right? Um, but what, you know, one of the things that um, you know, I, I think with with the last band wave, right? You know, one, I guess and this is one of the things I wanted to bring up is you know the fact that you know bands from the Axie team are you know the, they're really the only way that you know because you guys have access to a lot more data, a lot more information, yeah. and a lot more sort of context as to. Uh, you know, what's going on on a Scholar account, right? You know, me, I, I can maybe like see how many times they're playing a day or, uh, you know, see if they're active in my Discord or, uh, you know, look at their ID or whatever else. But you actually have the, you know, on the ground data of, hey, you know, there's something weird or suspicious going on here, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, do, I do these days ask for, uh, you know, ID and like a selfie just to make sure that, or, you know, to have some barrier there, but right. um, you know, as you're sort of going through the the banning process, you know, the, something that has always been, I guess, my philosophy and the philosophy that I 
want to impart to everyone, including the Axie team, right, is, is really around the fact that, you know, bands are informative, right? Bands mm. are as much, hey, there's something bad or weird going on here. You need to do something about this mm-hmm. as they are punitive in the sense of, hey, you are abusing the system. Uh, you know, you need to be punished, right? Um, and, you know, because even following best practices, even taking reasonable precautions, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and reasonable, uh, you know, will vary from person to person. You know, personally, I don't have the time nor the patience nor the anything to, you know, do a, let's say, conduct a video interview with every one of my scholars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as nice as that might be, you know, that's something that... How many uh, hours are in the know, day it, there, AK? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, to me, reasonable precaution is, you know, asking questions that have a clear right answer, asking for ID and, and you know, asking people to sort of put thought and effort into their application. And, you know, then sort of, you know, checking against, uh, you know, ASPL does have a list of, you know, both existing and, uh, you know, scholars that have abused things in the past. Um, and, and so, you know, checking against all of these things, yeah. having this sort of uh, form and, and, you know, at that point, if somebody gets past that, then, hey, good for them. And I, you know, the way that I will find out about that is through a ban. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and, you know, that there's realistically, you know, the, process of catch finding and catching multi-accounters falls on both the Axie team as yes. well as the managers, right? Um, yeah. And you know, that's something that, uh, you know, because let's say there isn't the resources or infrastructure to, um, you know, to build out full management tools or full suite yet, right? Uh, that's something that, uh, you know, the yeah. team does need to be responsible and helpful about sometimes in the sense of, you yeah. know, a three month ban is a very reasonable, like, you know, disincentive to where, Hey, like you want to make sure that, you know, you don't take on people who are going to yeah. abuse the system because, you know, losing your, you know, having a team ban for three months is a problem that hurts, but at the same time, yeah. isn't so uh, like over the top that it just would discourage somebody from offering scholarships and from taking a crack at it. three years because is kind of like a is, permaban. And that's like three years right. in crypto terms is, I mean, that's yeah, a long time. I, I, that's a really long time. And I think yes, you're right. Like that's uh, uh, one thing we failed on is not having a very clear sort of like rubric for different infractions and different band thresholds. And, you know, maybe it escalates. All right, this Axie got banned once for three months. If this Axie gets flagged again, okay, now it goes into <laughs> turbo mode where it's a year yeah. or two years. Like that needs to be codified and regular and optimized so that it, it, it strikes that balance better. I think that you're talking about AK where it's not just uh kind of an F you to the manager of like, all right, so my axes are just gone now. Um, it, yeah, we right. certainly don't have right. it quite and, right. And obviously the, the smart contract aspects of scholarships and automating some of that is hugely missing right now. Something we've been working on for a while. We're still working on that. Like we needed that yesterday. I mean, I, I got no excuse for that one other than like, yeah, we probably should have started building that one a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> right. Well, so, so, right. Some of that, you know, the because the scholarship model, right, originated from the community, it's something that you know wasn't necessarily like the game wasn't necessarily built. The infrastructure, the you know, the the thinking behind it wasn't built with that in mind, right? right. Uh, whereas somebody who's let's say starting something now. Right, that's clearly like top of mind. Like, hey, how are we going to deal with this? Exactly. Right? Um, exactly. And and so you know, it it will be nice to have some of those features built in. You know, the thing is that people have people have sort of you know learned to work around it. And in the current state of things, it's just it's essentially you know it just needs to be this sort of more collaborative thing where yeah you know the, one of the ways that the Axie team can actually communicate and help managers is through something like that mm-hmm. right um and, and it is through saying hey you need to get rid of this person that you know we have information that this is a problem um, yeah. and 
you know, that's in fact the most reliable and, and trustworthy way to say, yeah, you know what, I, I'm certain that this is a problem. It's like, yeah, you know, that, that account was banned. Okay. Could, right. Could um, we plug you know. ASPL a little bit? And I'm sure there's, it's been brought up a few times. We haven't really done a good job of even explaining what that acronym is. Um, I, I, I know it exists. I know I'm in the Discord, but how does one go about like joining? I think it it's not totally open to the public, right? So how does ASPL work and how can a manager listening right now with 15 scholars get involved? Right. So a ASPL is essentially, um, it, it started, um, you know, Kat and myself and Biff when we were basically the only three people running scholarships. <laughs> um, sort of got together and we're like, you know, yeah. we should have a way to compare notes. And, and as more people are interested in uh, you know, joining and, and, you know, offering a scholarship, um, you know, rather than, than them, let's say, DMing one of us and being like, how on earth do I do this? Let's actually have a hub for that. Um, and over time, it's evolved into sort of more of a community. You know, I honestly, I'm less involved in it these days. Um, you know, first, I simply don't have the time nor the uh, resources to. Cat, on the other hand, has really built it into something that's phenomenal, and she's done um, like a, a ton of work and a great job, sort of you know building that out into a resource both for managers as well as uh, you know the broader community. Um, and so you know ASPL as a thing uh, these days is essentially you know we have a uh, you know, uh, essentially a bot that does scan across all of the people who are members of, of uh, ASPL. It sort of goes, you know, looks through Discord servers and flags people who have, let's say, scholar roles in multiple Discords. Uh, mm, and, uh, okay. You know, that, that um, you know, is, it, it, essentially, it, it essentially helps sort of, you know, check and, and, and catch people, right? Huge. Um, and, you know, so, some of the pieces, I, I guess I don't want to say on a public stream simply because, sure. uh, you know, like, part of, you know, it's a game of cat and mouse, right? Yeah. Anybody who's sufficiently determined and knows how to, uh, uh, you know, That's... <laughs> how to deal with this and abuse this is going to, um, you know, cause problems. It's always so, a big concern uh, on our side of like, as much as we want to warn the good actors, how do the bad actors leverage these warnings to get even more clever? And it's like, you can't punish the good guys because of the bad guys all the time, but you also can't let the bad guys get away with stuff because you're trying to like, you know, pretend your environment is only good guys. That is yeah. by far one of the hardest balances to strike in any kind of social system like this in large. 100%. It is. And, and some of that can be, you know, and, and, Part of the, part of that challenge to me is is that um, you know trying to let's say apply things equally across the board also makes that a little harder in the sense that you know some there's some people some cases where you can know oh this is you know this person or th this group it, you know they have a history with us they they have mm -hmm. um, either been uh, let's say bad or good right <laughs> uh, forget you know the, the, the naughty or nice or however you want to frame it uh, if you're... <laughs> and uh, you know, but if you're but if you're thinking about it from the sort of we want to standardize this across everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Or whether it's for the purpose of fairness or the purpose of just like ease of use, um, you know, you you want to be able to have a healthy series of guidelines that people can follow to avoid most problems, right? Um, and then you know the the remaining let's say bad actors problems and and things that come up get solved through this sort of ban system. Right? I see. No, um, I love where it. The, where That's... the ban is informative. Um, and, you know, on the ASPL front, um, that I posted a link in the chat Great. Um, to the, uh, like, application to join. Um, nice. So one of the, uh, I guess, founding principles there, right, um, it is really um, you know, that scholars should be paid fairly and that the program should be uh, like run honestly and reason and and well and and so yeah. uh, you know not everyone is even able to join simply because you know if you're not paying your your scholars well why should you be able to benefit right from, right yeah you, you know, sort of have to resources verify so. good actor yeah. access yeah I like that yeah. oh, that's amazing yeah. this is, seems and, like uh, an yeah, amazing community with, tool <laughs> right and we see that with uh, you know Max's. Uh, Pay yeah. up bot things like that as well, mm -hmm. where you know it simply may not work or may not be okay if you if, if you are taking more than the, the scholar themselves. Yeah, 
Um, and to me, you know, I, I think of that as a form of multi-accounting, right? If you're earning more than 50% from multiple accounts, like how is that, you know, the fact that yeah. there's someone else involved in that process just, you know, seems like a footnote to me uh, compared to the fact that, you know, totally. you are essentially, you know, it's almost as if you're playing on many accounts if you're not, if you're not paying out at least half. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of gotcha. you know, a, okay. a piece of, uh, no, that's, yeah, that's really important um, insight. Uh, and the fact that that exists even is, I mean, I hear Bryce say all the time, like the community has to build stuff also like Sky Mavis has a yeah. lot to build, but we also have a lot to build on the community side. And that's, that's a powerful tool, man. I, uh, it makes me happy to know that exists and that we have the community is working on it. You know, that's, that's really powerful stuff. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, it, it does have to, or, you know, because the game didn't get built, let's say, uh, with, you know, scholarships in mind, right? yeah. it does have to come from both sides a little bit, especially until there is, uh, until know, we get caught a, up a full suite of, <laughs> of, of, of tools. Right. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, but, we're but yeah, there. you know, right. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think really at the end of the day, it's about, you know, making, you know, it, it's about re re not making it too arduous and difficult for people to Correct. grow the community, onboard their own scholars, and and you know, start even a small program, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, many many of my uh, former scholars went on to you know essentially offer scholarship accounts to their friends, right? Rather than referring them to me, they now have their own scholarship programs uh, with their friends, um, and that's great. That's how the web grows. Uh, and it also yeah, is, right. right, like it, it also is something that, um, you know, they, <laughs> like, have, you know, a ban on a small program has a much bigger impact mm, because, it's a, you know, for me, you know, if I have one account banned out of 800, you know, I, maybe I'll go get a glass of water and I'll be fine, right? Yeah. Um, if... For someone who has three accounts and has one of those three accounts banned, that's a, pretty big, big hit yeah um, no that's great perspective so, actually you know, that's something we always got to remember uh internally that's like a, a good mantra the spectrum of the users um ak this has been really fantastic yeah. i i hate to cut you off at all again we could probably do another hour here but we do need to wrap this up pretty soon uh, i know bryce has another meeting coming up here so i want to respect his time as well um any any like advice or kind of closing thoughts? Like I, I think we kind of want to give you the the final word as a guest before uh, Bryce and I Absolutely. close this thing out. So I'd love like anything you want to say, man. The the floor is totally yours. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think the main thing for me is is that you know the let's say the fear of bans shouldn't stop people from growing their program from doing what they think is right and from you know adding scholars and then and, and sort of you know growing the community growing the game yeah. right uh you know most of the bands that happened uh are sort of very targeted and a small small percentage you know i and that you know at the end of the day right uh you know the bands it's not like they're being dropped for, out from out of the sky randomly uh, yeah, you, you know, you can take reasonable steps. You, it doesn't have to be this uh, like super complicated, arduous process, and you know that you should be able to grow your program and you know work through things comfortably. Uh, and, and you know that that to me is is sort of you know, the, should be the priority both of the team and of you know people who are looking to start and grow things because. You know, at the end of the day, it, it does need to be sustainable. It does need to um, you know, be worthwhile for people. And, uh, you know, that, you know, people shouldn't see the bands as, oh, my God, I, I, I can't or I won't, um, you know, start something because I'm worried about this, right? Yeah. And you can take... Small, one step at a time. That, it's like that. Exactly. That, that 1% that every day. It's kind not, of thing. it's not super insanely demanding. Yeah. Um, ASP, uh, and, and, uh, you know, as a result, like you, you can run a good program and on this program with, you know, mostly good actors. And if you get one or two people who aren't, then you find out about that through a band. Right. Mm -hmm. And for three months, three months, you know, actually has been around for three years. 
So, you know, three months, is, it feels like a, a while, but it's really not all that long in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And you know, then you can, you know, make adjustments and give that account to someone else. Absolutely. So, yeah, all right. You know, a That's, lot to uh, digest. Super a, powerful. A lot Absolutely. to digest, but yeah, really powerful stuff. Uh, so appreciative to have you, AK. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for waking up early. I dropped your Twitter and Twitch chat because yours is hard to say. Uh, Vesak Axie, something like that. V E S A K. Yeah, something that, that, that Axie, works. I, yeah. I really, I should just change it to Axie AK. Yes, uh, like I, I second the notion <laughs> on that one, my That's friend. That's the AK Axie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss the ASPL. Um, link in, in chat um it's a it's an application form so they you know they if don't you want to dm everyone. it to me it looks like it got um, auto modded so if you want to shoot it over i'll be happy to post it with my okay, mod status right. and then people can find it uh, yeah that, that sounds good i'll send you a dm with it now um and you know essentially it's just it's a good tool and, and a helpful resource to have out there um and you know the uh, of course the more uh you know, honest managers who are, who are running programs who are a part of it, the more powerful it, it is as well. Yeah, right. So, it, it grows with the data. Absolutely. Yes, All right, AK, we'll I, have, I yeah, have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we've gone over time, but I think it was totally worth it. This conversation 100%. or series of conversations was amazing. Bryce, I almost feel like I didn't give you enough chance to speak. So oh, I, 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 I just want to say thank you for being here. I want to give you the last word. So I want to get a couple in first. Um, all, I, from the Sky Mavis side, I want to say thank you to everybody that participated. Thank you to everybody that watched. This is the first of many firesides to come. Anytime we have a big topic like this we want to dive into and hear from community leaders we're going to do it and shout out to everyone that reached out to me and said hey i want to participate and I, I i felt bad that the list was full but you know we got stuff to do we can't sit here all day talking i think two hours is, is more than enough so shout out to everyone and the future folks that'll be interested on the sky, sky mavis side we're working as hard as we can we're making steady improvements every single day i know some people were disappointed about the dev update and some of the delays but quality first and uh, the team is killing it internally and we appreciate you guys being patient. Bryce, close us out, buddy. Give us the final word. Again, thank you oh so goodness. much for being here. It was an absolute <laughs> privilege, my friend. This was an honor to be able to cast this alongside you and be a part of the first Axie Fireside chat. Super excited to be doing more of these in the future. And as Jiho would put it, guys, we are playing infinite games in the world of Lunasia. And every single day, we have a chance to rewrite history in the form of NFT gaming, play to earn, and where the future of Lunasia is headed. So. Keep your head up, keep moving forward, and I promise you will find everything you need to find in the wonderful nation of Lunasia. And as always, become the impossible. I love it. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah.